Yes, yes. Oh, man. <laughs> what is it, episode six? Five. 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 And today five you are half. Five, five, five time. One, two, three, four, five. Five time. WCW champion. <laughs> <laughs> half, halfway brown in the house, man. I see, bro. Uh, I see. Well, a couple, a couple of my friends were like, "You should paint in these because uh, they're hilarious. They loved it." <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah they're mine, they're they're mine. Mine. The brown and brown combo. There you go, brown, brown. Yeah, exactly. Love it, I love it. Yeah, you, bro. You had a. You said to me yesterday, "We got a special guest coming oh, yeah. on today." <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, the special guest didn't pan out. But oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that he'll definitely be on in a future episode for oh, sure but uh the special guest was actually supposed to be your brother Sam, <laughs> yes right so so <laughs> I, 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 let, I, I dangle that carrot to say we've got a special guest but um yeah he unfortunately couldn't make it and uh the reason why he was supposed to be on was because we're talking we were talking yesterday we had a, a, like a client call kind of thing just catching up mm. and then we started talking about training started talking about the whole covid situation and and how uh how the world's kind of reacting to it and it was really interesting man his take his take was was like our take but yeah, yeah. with his with his spin on it which is uh, mm. which I, I valued so much i was like bro you got to come on the podcast and chat this to the chat this to the world uh yeah. or chat to the, chat to the philippines anyway <laughs> <laughs> yes i was listening to the philippines we love you man thank you love you we thank you yeah keep pulling out content for you for sure, for sure, yeah, man. So he, he was just get in touch about, with us as well. Let us know. <laughs> yeah, give give us feedback. We want we want to know if we're, if we're if we're on the right track for this. If you're enjoying it, um, exactly. Yeah. So he he was just saying about how uh, like this is such a missed opportunity for the government, especially in this country, and it's 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 weird because there's so many times where they could have handled this differently and seen the opportunity to like reintegrate people back into society slowly um manage it in terms of like certain businesses who are being responsible at this time can still operate so they can still make them they can still kind of do their thing and they can keep the economy keep the economy in a place where it's healthy-ish um yeah. do the best with the bad situation basically and yeah. um he was just talking about how like it's just a shit show like not not yeah. to be not to be negative and like overly negative but when something can be handled better I don't think it's the right thing, and he was saying the same thing yesterday. I don't think it's it's definitely not the right thing just to kind of molly molly coddle yourself and say, "Oh, I'm doing the best I can." It's like, but we can do better. You know what I mean, mm. like, that's uh, that's in essence what he was saying, and I, I couldn't agree. I couldn't have agreed with him more. So mm. I just thought I'm going to try and have him on. But anyway, he'll definitely come on another time. Hopefully, hopefully next yeah. week while we're still kind of in this lockdown period, um, yeah, yeah. And we can kind of just talk about talk about the whole thing from his perspective. Obviously, he's a he's a business owner, how he's been mm. affected. I think that'll be a cool uh, a cool take to have yeah 100 percent, man i mean him and shad i mean they're just a couple of interesting cats i mean besides being my brother <laughs> and uh and being uh, in, in that relationship it's just uh, there's just a couple of interesting cats as well with uh, very very intelligent heads screwed on um and given the line of work that they're in and the fact that they're still going when the couple of the few of the places that they um uh, uh, provide business for they just had to they just basically went under pretty much straight away. So it's like they managed to hustle and keep things going, and like you know, that's uh, that's a sign of like a good operation. And hopefully, you know, long may that continue for them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have been sick. I would have loved to have spoken to them. I did speak to him a little bit about some of the stuff because you guys caught up by training. We hadn't caught up for a, for a little while as well, so we actually got face to face time as well. So that was really good. I was really really happy we managed to chat for a while. And um, yeah, just like that overwhelming mood of um, nihilism. Is, uh, is what he thought was going on. I'd probably express that to you as well. Mm -hmm. we, we touched on it last podcast as well, didn't we? What was he, what was mm -hmm. he saying to you? Oh, it was just, um, it's like one of the feelings that he's getting is basically, is like this nihilistic sense from people, right? Is, um, is if we're going to, uh, if we're going to sum it up into anything, because we, we've talked about how essentially we're always about how are you going to come through anything feeling better off? And, um, and one of the things that um, one of the stats that happened that went sh shooting up, but like everything's going down. So economy's going down, like productivity is going down. I forget unemployment going up, but there one of the stats was uh, alcohol sales have just gone through the roof as well, right? So um, that's suggestive of uh, 
like, what, what's happening is like is that so if we're panic buying it then does it, are our priorities out of whack <laughs> you know that's a question and then uh, but if we're buying more and more alcohol as this time goes on then is that our coping mechanism that's, mm. uh, that's a question and then if that's the case then you know evaluate that because how's that how's that genuinely helping you out you know is um in the long term because mm. so what we said last time as well is like you get the opportunity to turn inwards and there's that meme going around it's like now nah, i'd rather fucking bake bread you know i'd rather learn how to bake bread from scratch because i don't want to think about what's going on inside and and that's cool but it's like how are you going to come out of this better at the other end you know and yeah, that's man. the that's the that's the tricky part about it and that's what that's where the nihilism comes into it, is like if this is how you're dealing with stuff then it's basically suggesting that you don't see yourself having you don't see a good future for yourself right is like that's essentially what it's indicative of as well as like um so there's uh, there's questions for me i feel like there's questions to be asked there is um mm. if that's if that's the route you want to take to deal with stuff is there can you would you, uh, it'll be worth asking yourself is there a better way is there a better way i could deal with this so that i actually come out better mm, mm. this is this is this is interesting in so many places mm. you can go with that i mean like you're talking about the alcohol consumption but yesterday mm. um i dropped off tj and uh kfc was open and right. there there was actually two people in the car park directing traffic at kfc that's how <laughs> rammed that place was it was wow. so busy dude it was so busy there was there was like a like a guy who would you know those guys that stand at the airport doing this shit like yeah yeah they had, they had <laughs> traffic those. controllers yeah like kfc like kentucky fried chicken traffic controllers right like what That's the hell respect. this is absolutely ridiculous because again like you're saying like people people's priorities are just let me just have find comfort please give me the comfort because i can't take mm. the stress anymore in mm. whatever way that comes like give me a family bucket for one you know what i mean like <laughs> it's 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 like no man please like don't because literally there's 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 that kfc and there's there's a couple of gyms in that area and obviously those gyms are always going to be they're closed right now but what's wrong with opening those gyms up yeah, and this is tj post about it on his instagram uh follow tj right. singh it's uh it's, yeah cool yeah tj singh 1803 i think on instagram okay um he posts something he posts that um uh, basically just talking about this like with kfc bucket on one side and, and him training and uh him training at hardy wallhead uh mma which mm -hmm. is where we train in leicester on the other side and he was basically just saying like that's that's people's priorities right now like why mm -hmm. why can't the government look at this and say look you've opened fast food chains and the reason you've opened them is it's clear like people want to go and enjoy fast food things cool but at the same time, surely we should have some things in place for these businesses to say you can open too, but maybe it's it's with reduced reduced hours, maybe it's with reduced entrance occupancy, maybe it's like whatever you'd what however many clients you would have serviced in a week, you can now service that in a month. You know what I mean? Just like something, mm -hmm. something to say to like just reduce capacity, but you can operate. You know what I mean? And, and mm -hmm. in doing that, you're just you're just moving people out of this phase. But yeah. instead, they've just like shut everything down, which is, which is makes people uh freak out even more and then when when mm. something's open you see how that people just flood to these things that because they've got no other options yeah sure yeah exactly yeah. that's yeah. true man it's like yeah there's uh yeah you reduce your options and then you're like all right well i'm just gonna max out on this one it's kind of um not yeah it's not ideal it's so tricky as well because i think um i mean i like i generally just don't care about politics of stuff mm. it's just um it is it's like pro wrestling in a way <laughs> it's uh, i got that because i started thinking about it from that context with um when eric weinstein was on joe rogan's podcast the recent time recent one and he was basically talking about kayfabe you know like that wall between audience and the wrestlers and everybody knows that is fake but everybody continues to perpetuate it anyway yeah audience knows it's fake actors know it's fake but buy into it as if it's real and um and then if you break that wall then you're breaking kayfabe basically and um and so weinstein was making a point like you know that's a kind of i think he was saying that this is a model of thinking that we need to get to grips with f for the f for the future because that's basically what's happening 
with politics as well. Like especially in the states, you got someone like Donald Trump, who's basically the the heel, and uh, everybody wants to hate on him, even if he says something that isn't ridiculous. Everybody's like, "This is ridiculous," right? Um, so uh, there's that character that everybody wants to hate, and this is basically how I see politics playing out. I've just kind of he's articulated for me, and I've like I never really thought about it. I was just like, I just don't care because there's just so much pantomime here, and um, and then so having the way he's uh, put it in those words, and I was like, yeah, it is like fucking pro wrestling, <laughs> you know. There is that there is that um, element that we all buy into it, even if we think it's fake. So forgetting about all the kind of politics of it all. It's just like one giant experiment and giant shit of unintended consequences coming out off the back of that. It's like, especially if you don't implement anything well, if you don't have a good plan of action, even if the course of action is continuously moving, it's like understanding, it's it's almost like as if um, that first that first hurdle of thinking is the only one that's being crossed. And then it's like, all right, well, I've got 110 meter hurdle race. I'm going to cross that first hurdle. And it's not even like I'm going to um, figure out, uh, it's like, you're just going to ram into the second hurdle. It's not even like you're going to try and figure out how to jump over that next hurdle. Mm. So it's just, um, it's, it's creating problems upon problems as well. And like, you know, the other problem being that, uh, yeah, the other problem being that unemployment is um, increases more, when unemployment rises, mortality uh, rises as well and mm. uh, so it's like how do we go on lockdown from unemployment <laughs> You're right, it's, like, it's, nuts. it's just it's um, nuts. yeah it's just more like uh there's th those unintended consequences that uh you know probably didn't foresee but there's uh, it's just so freaking complicated it's such a complex mm. to try and deal with but um but i reckon as you say there's uh, priorities you can as an individual realign yourself with uh how to prioritize a, a good life basically during mm -hmm. during this time or like you know hustle to try and make sure that you in the future if anything uh, even remotely like this happens again that you're at least a little bit prepared um yeah, in whatever yeah, yeah. you need to be whether so it's right. financial, whether that's having the right people around you or uh, approaching it mentally in the right kind of way mm. that's that's like uh you can take it like what you're saying there is taking it subjectively like uh, objectively like i i will deal with this how i will deal with this and mm. then whatever's happening on that side of the world in terms of the government in terms of how mm. the, the kind of the, the rigmarole that they're playing they can carry on playing that game but me mm. i need to be uh, the owner of this i need to be the owner of myself you know what i mean like as long as i'm doing that like then it's almost like i don't put any weight on the system like the same way we talk about staying yes. healthy being immune compromised puts the weight on the nhs and it's like mm -hmm. that puts the weight on on uh, doctors and nurses and, and people around them and you know all this stuff where they don't need us they don't you don't need me to be sick right now so i'm going to do all my mm -hmm. i'm going to do my part as a human as a, as a uk citizen right now to look yeah. after myself look after people around me obviously we work in the health profession so hopefully i think we have a wider reach than somebody else can have but yeah that's the response to that kind of falls on me right now and we know with with in, in line with what you just said about the government not going about this with the whole picture in perspective is that i know the consequence of what well, I, I know the the end goal the end goal is to stay fit to move forward and to like align with who i need to be as a person to stay healthy and mm -hmm. fit and productive and and well-meaning and, and moving people around me forward right but yeah. what's the end goal for the government? Like sometimes you feel like because there is seemingly ulterior motive, motives at heart, there's like yeah. one, there's like one um, uh, agenda over here, and there's this another agenda over here. So and, and that that's the poll you always get, and that's where you always feel like there's ne there's never really like a a full answer. That that's the thing yeah. with politicians, right? You always feel like you get a half baked answer, a half baked question. Mm -hmm. No one's really like get into the root of the problem no one's really like sticking your finger in your chest and saying like tell me what time it is like i need to know <laughs> yeah. this right because they're always so split in their in their answers mm -hmm. um and and that that's the root that's the the root is no one really knows <clears throat> where we're going where we're heading and because that's that's the uh the end like we don't know the means to get there does that make sense mm -hmm. like if, if we knew the clear defined goal and it's something that you talked to me about this this week talking about like kind of clients mm -hmm. of defining the end for them and that's the product that you're kind of buying into when you vote for a government they promise all this stuff but then there's no clear defined method together there's no clear defined yep. kind of end and even now i've not really heard that 
talked about too much. I'm, again, like yourself, I don't follow politics, but I do think it's something that we should actively kind of have an understanding of because, mm. again, like we said, like we play our part by keeping healthy and strong. But at the end of the day, if it's a construct that's that deeply set in society, we almost need to have some kind of awareness of it. And I, I'm like you, like I, I'm not really ever um, – paid attention to it i've always thought of it as like just just some clown like you watch the house of commons sometimes and just like who are these more <laughs> like who's who's this little guy at the top like screaming and standing up and it's like it's like a play it's like a play this is like I'm going yeah. to see some idiots just like what what is what's going on you know what I mean? like and, and the, the best thing is watching it with like an asian old asian uncle or something and they just, <laughs> they, they just rip it to shreds man and you just then you're left with with no respect for our entire hierarchy of like government and parliament and stuff um but i think i think there's there's definite like for us like coming up through this that's the game you know what i mean we almost have to know the game how to know that we all have to know the game to know how to play the game to, have, to know how to win the game you know what i mean and um yeah man it's it's interesting there's so many different cogs turning but yeah i i personally want to understand it more just to see mm -hmm. how like one day i see it seems random now i see myself like going into like county level politics and being like okay i want to be like the 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 the, the elected what's the word candidate of this like Leicester you know what I mean like mm -hmm. Leicestershire or whatever um just because yeah. at the end of the day we help people for a living that's that's mm -hmm. if that can help nations then I suppose that's that's the that's the that's the route we can go to as well you know what I mean mm. yeah 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 and like um I think ultimately that come that boils down to like you know you're controlling what you can control and letting that play out right it's like what you said it was like am I taking care of this cool if I'm doing that then by extension, the things around me are better off as well. Too right, man. Too right. Yeah, and then that, that, that kind of like you're talking about like business owners. Um, I don't know. You'd kind of hope that one day there'd be a system where you could present forward a case to your constituent or your, your like, um, I don't even know what the word is. I'm trying to use the word constituent. Like the person who kind of looks after mm. the neighborhood, right? You kind of put yeah, a case yeah. forward to them to say, look, I'm a responsible business owner. I've taken, I've taken social distancing measures. I've taken these measures and those measures and hand sanitizing measures and all this kind of stuff. Can I run my business at a time like this? Like, should this ever happen again? Because people are talking mm. about there being like a first wave and a second wave and whatever. Mm. You can't just keep going in and out of lockdown. That's not a solution. The solution is not to, it's like having a conversation, right? The solution is not to say, ah, oh, fuck you, I don't care. Like that's, that's yeah. not the solution. The solution is to arrive at a compromise and mm. um, give and take where we can. But yeah, you you just don't see anything like as progressive or as forward thinking as what we're chatting about. We're just two blokes who do jujitsu sometimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the fuck do we know? Yeah. <laughs> just we could say all the shit at the end of it. I like the Bill Burr Bill Burr approach, which is, but what the fuck do I know? You know? Yeah, we'll throw your hands up. It's true, man. You don't have to listen to us two dickheads. It's fine. <laughs> we just we just try to live life well. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just like I feel like tomorrow, if, if like if the raids of the country were just kind of given, we'd be like, yeah, okay, let's do this. Let's play. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, exactly. we can have a go. I love it. Like, yeah, I'll be like, um, first I'll be like, you know what? I, I need to take care of myself first. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's true. That's so true, man. I, I can't take that responsibility for you guys at the moment. I'm going to work on the individual level, try to affect people around me. I can't I can't take your responsibility right now. Mm, but, um, that's true. That's true. And then I think in, in doing that, you kind of, you fill your cup. And then once your cup is like mm. brimming and ready, then you're just like, okay, right, let me dish this out. Like kind of, uh, yeah, man. yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That's the that like so go on, go on, go on. No, no, Muhammad Ali quote. Yeah, the Muhammad Ali quote. It's super, a super, super long one, but he's talking about like, um, take a, a quarter of kindness and a pinch of a pinch of happiness yeah. and and serve it to every willing and deserving person I meet through my life. Like mm. the, the more you kind of give to yourself, the more you kind of give yourself gratitude and give yourself this, you become this like cake, right? Like the one he's talking about yeah. recipe, right? And whatever he's yeah. talking about making, it doesn't matter. But he's like, okay, now I'm I am this amalgam of all these things. And when I meet mm -hmm. these people, I can serve it in, in their various ways. And the way we do that is we learn about like posture and we learn about health and we learn about sleep mm -hmm. and we serve it to our people as like yeah. a, as like a, um, that's, that's the change that we want to create in the world. So yes. yeah, man, bit of Completely. a tangent, but totally legit. No, man, that's, that's it. Like no limits, man. <laughs> say what no, you got to say. <laughs> too right, man. too right. Tell too me, man, right. halfway, halfway brown. Is this uh, what I think it is? Is two weeks, two weeks down? Yeah. 
for That's it, right two there. weeks so two weeks and two days right now i think mm. um not next friday the friday after might be the last fast or the, or maybe yeah. like that friday is not if my friday is not the last fast it'll be the saturday um mm. so roughly around that time obviously we, we know we go off of like lunar sure. sightings and and then and, and like that that when it's been a full kind of month lunar cycle month um we'll say that yeah that, that's 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 the end of ramzan and uh it's eid uh so there will be there'll be end of fasting but yeah that's that's kind of, i thought we'd kind of uh i was thinking of, uh, always, always have that 10 minute before the podcast what should my name be today <laughs> yeah. who am i who am i <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna bail one week and just be big brown and be like, okay, I give a shit. Like, I'm just gonna be yeah, like, what, what you what, what you intended me to be from the start. <laughs> I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna actually conform. Uh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't say those words to me, man. You be who you want to be. <laughs> I ain't holding yeah. you down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah, I was just thinking. I was like, yeah, that, that in terms of segue off from last week, being like, mm. okay, where where are we after a whole week of fasting? And in summary, just in the same place, man. Same place, strong. Yeah, okay. Mindset feels strong. Uh, yeah i kind of kind of talked to a few more like friends family um yep. some people are kind of struggling a little bit some people are feeling better this week mm-hmm. and um yeah i just think i just think it comes down to that same thing regardless of fasting regardless of where we're at it's it's the mm-hmm. it's the questions you ask yourself it's it's the it's the rhetoric you have running through your head it's the say it's the words that you say i mean like i, I said it last podcast like this and we said it off air a few times this podcast helps me so much to affirm and put it out there in the world and say like just me doing the reps of me speaking these words is yeah. is so powerful right and that 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 is that ends up being who i am you know what i mean and then mm-hmm. then, then it's like okay i feel fine i feel fine all the time yeah fantastic man fine all the yeah. time <laughs> that's a t-shirt that's a t-shirt <laughs> that's a t-shirt, <laughs> that's a t-shirt. Hey, i'm fine all the time <laughs> all the time yeah, yeah bro I was just talking to my uh, my little cousin Bilal. He uh, he's you know Bilal. Uh, he he yeah, just yeah. came over. He just came over a little while ago just to drop off some food and stuff. And uh, his his mom's his mom's always kind of cooking and sending stuff over. It's really nice. And uh, she said he I asked him and he was like yeah finding it tough finding it kind of okay. And he was talking about like losing weight during this month. So I think that's something that people especially like guys out there will be struggling with like kind of feeling feeling like they're losing their gains and all this kind of stuff. Mm. But but like, I don't think it's something that you should really worry about too, too much. Because mm. uh, I remember, I remember last year training at Wave, and uh, it was it was like training during the month, and then having like a week after, I was I was almost like similar to how I started the month off in terms of body weight, in terms of kind of energy levels. So mm. yeah, if anyone's listening to the podcast worrying about like feeling a bit drained or whatever. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I think just get through the month and uh, mm. do your best with your sleep and your food, like we've talked about in the past. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you'll be fine after. You'll be fine sure. all the time. Fine all the time. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's, I, think, I, think, I think that's important because we can get stuck in that short-termist view of, oh shit, I'm losing my gains. I'm feeling, feeling crap. It's a physiological adaptation. It's, uh, it's, it's bound to happen. So it's nothing to worry about because basically when you come out of it, mm. you're going to go back to, you're going to ramp up your training again and then you get yourself back to where you were. And that's, um, it's just, that's just, uh, it's just life as well. <laughs> it's like, it's just, this is the way it goes. You know, you gotta, you gotta adapt, um, adapt some things. Sometimes it's not going to be perfect, but then you work your way back up again. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, I don't know if you, do you know who, uh, who Mark Bell is? Mark yeah. Bell, super, super training um yeah. he says it he says it like what's what's a way that you can that you can pr every day and mm. uh well, if, I, if i ask you well, what do you think it is what's the way you can pr every day just make a small action that moves you forward yeah basically uh, he, but what, what, what he does with is, is do something new do something new mm. every day and you pr like that's the first yeah. time you've tried it and that's that's you've done better than you've done yesterday because you've done it before like you've pr yeah. and i think right now that what that gives me is like positivity i feel positive having pr'd every day and at a time where things are negative and things are difficult um if we can have like certain things i mean we've talked about it before changing up training in terms of are we getting more flexible are we getting more like body aware are we are we improving the ways in which we uh yeah we 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 basically move and the way we eat and the way we sleep and the way we have our how our daily schedule you know there's all these wins that we can have but mm-hmm. 
really we, we look at appeasing like one win which is like what's the number on the scale say like does that scale out i'm going down oh shit my 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 uh my like mental state wavers as a result and i remember i had this training partner when i was like about 18 19 when i was going through my like crazy just mental training phase and yeah. uh he would <laughs> i remember one time we came to the gym and he weighed himself before the session at home and he walked in he's like really like sullen kind of like dragging his heels what's up with you he goes oh i'm like four kilos lighter than i was when i weighed myself last time i was like what do you mean he goes, oh well, i've lost weight and I, well, I feel i feel weak you know i just feel i feel soft you know i don't feel i don't feel like i should train today and uh i was like okay, that's a bit strange like, have you weighed yourself on the scales that we have at the gym he's like no nah. he's like why don't you just weigh yourself there get get a bit more of a understanding if, if that's really your weight so he goes and weighs himself he comes back and he's like yeah happy i was like what's up with you and he's like oh I'm about a kilo heavier and i was like <laughs> so, it was literally that that was the hinge like yeah. the number on the scale was the only thing that he was hanging wow. his hat on to say that yes. this is my self-worth like mm. i can tie myself to this and i think if you're if you you can relate that to yourself in, in any way any form of life if there's that one thing you're putting all your eggs in that one basket mm. have many baskets you know what i mean have loads of baskets like like the more you have, the more you're just abundant in so many ways, right? Exactly. Mm. Living in abundance, man. It's true. That's why it's um, like clients or people will generally put all the weight on the scale because I want to lose weight. 90% of people is like, I want to lose weight. But then you forget that if that's the only thing you're focusing on, you might not realize how much better you actually feel, how much better you're actually moving, how much stronger you actually are, how much fitter you actually are and how how your body's recomp um uh recomping you know the recomposition mm -hmm. that you go undergoing so you're becoming uh you're losing some fat and you're building some muscle you place that way um place yourself on the scale and you realize you maybe only lost a pound compared to thinking you lose five or you haven't shifted at all but then if you ignore any one of those other aspects of it as well which is a fundamental part of feeling healthy feeling fit feeling at your best and you disregard all that because of what the number is saying then it's an unhealthy relationship with getting yourself into shape because you will you will fall down at the first hurdle because yeah. it, it's sometimes uh, and it might not be the first hurdle it might just be like because it's so easy especially if you're a novice to make those gains right mm -hmm. and then you keep going up and up and up and then you start to plateau and if you start to if you stop doing the thing uh, stop doing the right things just because you either plateau or you maybe um, dip down a little bit on your on your journey then there's uh the, 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 the long-term view isn't there basically whereas if you just realize that that just means that you're in a better place that you have there's there's other ways for you to start pushing on and other other markers and other metrics that you need to pay attention to then uh, you realize that you're making supreme gains you know mm. so, uh, you just you gotta pay attention to the bigger picture not just the not just the not just a number on the scale mm. it's like a balanced approach right it's like balance mm. I'm, I'm sharing like you know we used to play fifa and you make that yeah. character for yourself and it's like like or like fight night or whatever like i used to, I used to yeah. play fight night. That, that was that was my game right and right. uh you'd have like power you have heart and you have stamina and you have like um endurance and stuff or whatever mm. and, and then like footwork or like coordination and like the one i'd always go towards was power so like just just like you'd get points and you could allocate them anywhere right so you could allocate and i'd always have like a horrible like power score so my, my diamond would be like nothing down here no stamina no heart no perseverance <laughs> just like one big haymaker like come near me <laughs> come near me please like that's the only thing i wanted right and then you realize that you get into a Amazing. fight and then the guy gets into the second round and you're like oh, i've got nothing yeah. for you now whereas like then, then you go back to training so oh, maybe i should give a bit more to my stamina maybe i should give a bit more to my footwork right and my, my defense yeah. um and it's like it's like the same thing in life like or with training um you you can you can look at that scale weight and uh, i've got to shout out tj again here because he's got a client who's who's i think he's 19 or 18 years old yeah. and um through the whole of lockdown his name's shrill um he's lost about seven kilos of body fat and mm. i think when when they started working together he uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna get this wrong now but basically he's recomped really really well he's yeah. he's the same weight that he was um he's, yeah he's the same way he was when they started but 
his his look is obviously much much better this is where things mm -hmm. like taking pictures of yourself taking body fat skin calipers of yourself okay. taking measurements of your of your actual muscle of your of your circumferences around your arms around your waist around your legs and stuff and, and all this stuff um can paint a much bigger picture of, of the progress you've, you've achieved and mm -hmm. um like he's a he's a he's a kid and uh he's managed to like go through lockdown i think he's changed his job to like a night shift um so he's had to manage his sleep differently he's yeah. had to manage his daily routine differently where he's working at night he's sleeping during the day he's managing his food differently he's training differently obviously mm -hmm. he's had to train with no gym so it just shows like with with a bit of an eye toward the other things the other the other factors that go into giving you the thing you want in the end a bit of like looking at those in as important as oh, how, how many bicep curls did i do today well, how did you sleep today? You know, how did you breathe today? How did you regulate all these other things? Because mm -hmm. really, if you if you're looking at one thing to appease a system, uh, one one thing to appease a picture, which many things are going in to create, then you're only like you you are only kind of going in there with one with one weapon being being that big right hand, but you, you yeah. need everything. Yeah, man. Yeah, especially in, I mean, first of all, massive. Massive props to him for yeah, making that recall, man. That's that's big. That's smashing it. He's following that process, man. And um, his that goal is his goal is that the process. process. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I said it wrong. I wasn't supposed to say process. I was supposed to say process. <laughs> I can't say when it. Said, when, <laughs> when you said it, my mind just got like, wait. What did you yeah, say? exactly. <laughs> I was like, no, you said it wrong, bro. He's like, I don't understand. Yeah, bro. What that word is. <laughs> process. Process. Yeah. yeah, for everybody, for everybody, for everybody wondering what the hell Grid is talking about, <laughs> uh, I think I think we should tag it in the in the in the show notes or something. We should tag it yeah. in there. Can we do that? The video, Probably. the video of Eric Thomas, and it's called uh, "Everybody Want to Be a Beast." Type mm -hmm. it in on YouTube, and but don't type it in when you're not about to work out because you will be about to work out afterwards. <laughs> so, yeah. I, <laughs> that I, is type it. Legit, legit truth. After, when you sent that the first time, when you sent that clip the first time, I was on my way to work. Um, okay. So this is obviously when we were, when we could work, right? <laughs> so back we could in the go, day. Go, back in the day. In my day, when we used to be able to go to a physical place of work, it was... Uh, I don't, even, I don't even know if I remember how to walk there anymore. Yeah, <laughs> basically, it was like a 40 minute journey, right? And I got that, I think I got the message from you like before I left. It was like, guys, check out this video. Started playing it on my way to work. I was like, I got a train as like, as soon as I get to work, I, I'm trained. <laughs> I've got to train when I get to work. <laughs> I was so like, that's it, it's over for everybody else. And I used <laughs> as well. There's that, the last two minutes of that video is the bit that resonates with me the most where he's shouting about the process as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I just uh, just get that, I just use that. That just sets my mind right, man. It's so, so powerful. Too right, man. Too right. It's, it's kind of like uh, akin to like a lion seeing a gazelle on the, on the, on the kind of plains, mm. right? It's like yeah. w when you say those words and you say it like that, you're just like, oh, shit, yeah. that speaks to me. Like, I see the yeah. prey now. I see the focus. And like, yeah, that, yeah. That, just, that just tells us like more about ourselves. Like, if, if, if I was to, if I was to like try and stimulate in any other way, like oh, sit on the sofa, this comfortable sofa, you, there would be a part of us that would be like, oh, okay, I'll sit on the sofa. But really, the way we feel most fulfilled is when we have that that chase. You know, when that when that, when that, that the process, the, the process. process, exactly. <laughs> That's what it is. It's hardwired into our into our nervous system. It's um, it's it's we've talked about it before. It's dopamine, man. It's uh, it's that dopamine reward system where if we wouldn't be alive if we didn't have that we wouldn't be alive if we didn't have the chase because basically on a fundamental level is if we don't have that then we wouldn't seek out a mate we wouldn't seek out shelter we wouldn't seek out food we would just die that mm. that and so that's that system is baked into us to 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 go for more and uh and yeah it's part of that uh, dopaminergic reward system so if we're so interesting yeah, man, if we're using, if that's why goals are important. And that's why the process is so important because if you reward the process, it, sorry, man, I keep saying it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Mid-sentence. If you reward the process, <laughs> you will uh, have that dopamine hit, which is re relevant for your goal. So you've got to have that process, which is relevant for your goal and uh, reward it 
appropriately so every time you achieve something on your way to achieving that goal not just achieving that goal you have to do that you have to have that relationship with the process so that you are actually um, rewarding that process so that you actually feel good along the way which makes mm. you want to keep going for it mm. and then when you get to the end result it becomes even uh, becomes uh, becomes spectacular mm. so it's um yeah you have to uh it was it was more to do what was it to do with i can't even remember now but yeah that's why like yeah the lion and the gazelle is, mm. is part of uh, is, is part of uh, our deep and like reward system is uh and that's why we feel fulfilled doing it because it's such a such a fundamental part of our being to to have that um to have that um was it that model that model of uh action yeah man yeah that you know that and that's super super now sounds to say again now super necessary <laughs> yeah. you could see you knew that was coming right you know was coming. <laughs> uh, I was, uh, so like i was doing some study this morning and uh, there's a guy on YouTube called uh, what's his name Sam Sam Webster. I don't know if you've seen his anatomy uh, stuff. He does some really good. Oh uh, yes, I did actually. Yeah, I've seen it once. I think he's like, is he Welsh? I think he's Welsh. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. He does it at some university though, right? Yeah, he has. He's like, and what he has is he has these like dummies that are really like anatomically correct, and obviously he has a skeleton, mm -hmm. and he, then he has like one of the leg, and it'll have like all the all the innovating nerves, and it'll have the um, like the the layers of muscle. So, for instance, the one I watched this morning was on the lower body. So he like he would unplug the glute and say, okay, right, well here's your glute mid, and here's your glute min, and your piriformis, mm -hmm. and like your obturator, and all this kind of stuff that kind of feeds into the same area, um, and just seeing it visually lets you know that oh shit like i got that right here like it's in my yeah. hip like you know what i mean like as a teaching tool people are much more akin to understanding themselves when they can when you can see it and touch it and like this is something that we're gonna yes hopefully have at the gym as well is to say like okay when we're trying to teach a client i've done this before when i used to work at up we'd have a skeleton in the corner and i'll take a client over there and be like okay when you move your when you move your arm over here that scapula is doing this like it's doing that rotation um I think it's the same thing for this in terms of the neurons, in terms of the brain, in terms of how this thing governs everything and like what is the central nervous system and how can it, how is it looking out for your best interest and, and basically just giving people a, a, a book, like almost like a, a method on themselves, but doing it in a very practical way. Cause I think a lot of people are practical learners in that sense where, where when you see the model, when you see the diagram, when you see the, the physical being of, this is what happens here and this is the channel that it follows and this is how this is linked to you when you were running around like as a neanderthal many many generations ago versus you when you're here today and you see a pretty girl you know what i mean it's like it's like there's there's links you know what i mean or you see like the process it's like oh this, this, <laughs> the same lights going off in your head you know what i mean like that, yeah. that's 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 how that works and then you can like i think again we always talk about it's like knowing yourself um mm -hmm. is is it's super necessary. It's super necessary. And that's yeah. also a process. <laughs> it, it takes time. Man. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's like, because um, uh, I think we talked, I don't know if it was the first or second one we talked about it, but the idea that your identity is always shifting, right? Mm. Um, and there's truth to that because there's so many inputs that go into defining who we are. So when we change those inputs, then we're going to change who we are. So, mm. and um, so we are this ever evolving creature and you can't, it's like, yeah, you can't necessarily say that like you can't, yeah, this, it's not a fixed thing. Your identity is not a fixed thing. So it just is you, you shape yourself to what you align with the most to what is the thing that you get uh, more, most out of life or where you spend most of your life, you know? So basically if I was to, yeah, if if I was to like, you know give myself an example, the things I value the most are basically health and learning. And so, and under health bracket is like physical, mental, emotional health, and then under learning is just which is evolving, which is um, like I just have a voracious appetite for knowledge because I'm so curious about what it is to be a human being and like why do we behave the way that we behave and how are we the way we are. It's such a complex thing to try and understand. But I find the more I delve into that, the better I can learn how to live my life, basically. And so there's, uh, but somebody else is values. Like, so this is, these are my, those are my values right now. But in the future, my highest value, my highest priority might become family. So then it will shift. And then based on that, my, 
like uh, who I am kind of shifts a little bit as well, because it's not just, uh, then it's not just about me, it's about my wife and kids basically. And that's my world instead. So it's just um, all that, all that stuff is uh, constantly shifting. And I find in the work that we do, people's identities change um, mm. somewhat because there's a lack of, um, oh, like somebody I've spoken to recently is like lack of self-belief, um, lack of self-worth, um, you know, always putting other people ahead of themselves. And, um, and so, and that's why the, the long-term goal has never been attained or it's very, it's only ever been short lived because it's just a lack of belief that it works, uh, in, in themselves rather, not that it works. And then that by extension, it means that it doesn't work for them. And so when you show them that it is possible, and like you said last time, you know, gift the process, you got to gift it to them and keep them in mind and in line with the uh, with the ultimate goal that they have, and also celebrating along the way. So tapping into these uh, uh, like evolutionary necessary reward, uh, systems that we have, which allow us to move forward, given our the compli uh, the complications that we experience in our world and the distractions that we can have keeping it aligned with how we fundamentally operate as human beings, then that person can change and that person's identity mm. changes. So it's not that they don't have any self-belief anymore. It's not that they don't feel any self-worth. It's like, I do have self-belief and I do have self-worth. And then for that individual changing that over the next few months, they're going to be able to be there for their family. They're going to be in a much better place to be able to serve their family and serve themselves because they were able to take care of themselves learn how to do that and learn how to have mm. belief and learn how to have the worth because uh, it's shifting all the time you it's not a fixed thing if you believe it's fixed if you if you stay in that mindset then nothing's going to change and mm. uh, you will end up being in a position where you're like what if you know what if i had done this instead so rather than save that if you put the effort in to pursue something life automatically becomes a lot more meaningful and that changes your identity into something that you are more happy with too right man too right that's, that's a great great so many so many wicked nuggets on what you just said there man i mm -hmm. think um just looking back at your own life like looking back at we always kind of will we'll always attribute uh, or we'll go to clients and say like we've worked with this person we've worked with that person but really for us to be in the position that we're in today luckily we've had that we've had those reps on ourselves you know I mean, yes. we both come from very different places, but really the path has been similar. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. once, once we understood that we weren't happy, once we understood that, you know, I'm doing this every day, but it's not fulfilling me. Um, mm. But I see there is remnants of what I want in other people, in other walks of life. Um, and th that won't ever exist in one human being because you are the only one human being. You know what I mean? Like that's the only place mm. that ever really exist. Um, but you, you, as soon as you start seeing that example, and you start seeing that you know, I want to align with this and I want to align with that, um, everything can come together. You become so much more mm -hmm. effective and so much more dangerous. You know what I mean? Like, kind of, you, yeah. there, there, there's like, there's you can do damage. Then you know what I mean? You're, you're not just being damaged. That's um, yes. that that's that's the uh, that's the win, man. That's the win. And right. um, yeah, it's so interesting, man. It's so interesting. I, I really think that people out there listening to this. Um, I'd like to hear your thoughts. You know what I mean? I'd like to hear your thoughts on mm. on that in terms of are you in a place where some part of your body, some part of your life, some part of your like your future is a bit ambiguous. You don't really know what it takes to get to that next level. Um and if so, what's your plan to get there? You know what I mean, and if mm. and if like when when there's, there's there's no ulterior motive to this podcast, we're just talking because we enjoy talking. But if we can in any way kind of get you there, I think that could be really cool. That could be really interesting to see that, you know what, we've done it ourselves. We do this with people anyway. Um, and it's a learning process process for you, for me, for, for everyone. Um, yeah, man, I think that that's uh, that's the win. That's the win of all of this is, is people yeah. moving forward in the way they want to move forward and having more of an understanding of how to move forward when they get stuck so that they can yeah. affect the next guy, which is exactly what we've done. 100%. Fully, man. Um, it's uh, that's right. It's like whoever's struggling with this is just like, yeah, just reach out. You know, it's, mm. this is what we do. This is what we do for a living. We we help people. You know, 
fundamentally is transforming their bodies, but it's a lot more than that. You'll end up transforming your life as well. So mm-hmm. we're we're always there for that. And and then on top of that, it's um, and you kind of you kind of basically said it as well. And essentially, what I was getting at was um, you are who you are based on the values that you decide to align yourself with. So if you've got a certain set of values, then you, you want to do the behaviors that um, express those values. If you've got a completely different set of values, then you're going to do the behaviors that set those values. So then, again, your identity is different. Your identity shifts. And then what, what would you say, like, say those people listen to this, right? How, how would they be able to identify the values or the, I mean, I, I call, them, call them virtues, like whatever, but mm. the negative, the negative um traits that they have that they maybe not be aware of of you know and that that's one that's one Mm -hmm. off the top of my head which is like do you genuinely kind of go through life with lacking awareness of situation of the opportunity within the situation of Mm -hmm. the full perspective you know i mean like do you ever kind of do you have the time to deep dive and actually see things for what they are and that could be linked to so many different things whether it be are you resting enough to actually fully mm-hmm. be present in the moment? You know what I mean? Like last night, um, my whoop score was really high. I felt like I slept really well. I didn't, I didn't, I kind of zonked out. And today I feel super sharp. I feel like I've, I've, had, I've had a lot of conversations this morning, study wise, I've sorted out clients, I've, I've done a bit of training and everything's got done. And now here I am with you and I feel like I'm fully present in the conversation. I feel mm-hmm. like I'm, we're having a great chat. Um, and I'm, I'm able to do that as a result of the other, appeasing the other things, you know, that same back to that same pie chart, like can't just have power, can't just have one thing. Um, yeah. And I think, what do you think to that? What do you think that across, across like your experience with clients, what is something that people may have as part of them, but maybe not be aware of it? Uh, on the, on the, on the trait side, which is holding them back. Oh, I missed that bro. Say again. Oh, so yeah, it's on the side of uh, on like having traits that are holding them back that they might not be aware of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like obviously, you can kind of go to that like um, lack of like uh, lack of routine, lack of structure, mm-hmm. that kind of simple mm-hmm. thing. But like, and then that feeds off into are you having are you making time to train? Can you actually make time to train, or does it actually just put a strain on your life? To for me to mm-hmm. tell for me to put it in your in your workout to say for me to like look at you as a client and say you need to train. But does that actually put a strain on you rather than actually helping you? Should I address the thing that we need to free up some time first? We need to make you more time efficient at doing what you're doing. Or mm-hmm. We need to be aware of where you can be more time efficient. Like, for instance, yeah. I'll have days where I'll just spend an hour scrolling through Instagram. Like, my life is no better off because of it. Yeah. And no one's life is better off because of it. I'm, I may like a few posts and I may, mm. you know, that, that's it. You know, I'm not, produ- I'm not productive in that time where what I could do is sure. I could have like a set time in my day mm-hmm. where, okay, go and chill on Instagram. Just go and enjoy it because you want to go and have a look at what you're made to yep. do and you want to go to what people are posting. That is your time. Go and do it. Um, yeah, just little things like that. What kind of comes to mind? Yeah, for me, it's like, uh, it's always doing a situational analysis because if you're like, if you're if you want to get a result so but you don't know how to get there then you're going to have to look at what's going on in your life right and like uh you have to you're going to have to um analyze it and it's not like you have to figure out all the answers all at once because it's going to be a process because what you do on a monday is probably different to what you do on a sunday you know so what happens on a monday is like okay then at the end of the day make notes about um what's going on in that day same on a tuesday same on a wednesday is like um here's let's put that into a concrete example say it gets to so say we're in our, we're in the old world and we're at the office you know and somebody's always brought in treats you know um everybody can relate to this um whoever's worked at an office um is it gets to three o'clock in the afternoon and you just start chowing down on a donut it's not even an activity that you kind of noticed that you were doing um it just happened and now what you need to do is because if you want to change your uh you want to change how you feel about your body you want to change your body so you feel better in life that's going to be an activity that you're going to have to start paying attention to so when it happens you're going to have to ask yourself several questions in a non-judgmental way that's really important as well it's not like you're being judged in this moment you have to do it in a non-judgmental way so you have to go oh i feel like eating a donut i am eating a donut how quickly am I eating it? Am I wolfing it down? Is it a mindless activity? 
what what was I thinking about five minutes before chowing down that donut? What time did I have that donut? Um, did that has that happened on multiple occasions? The same time, the same trigger, the same feeling that I'm experiencing, the same thoughts that I'm having around it. You have to start building that level of awareness up, mm-hmm. and that's going to extend out to everything else. Um, so, but that's a really straight. That's a good concrete example because it's it's so common. Then it's not just analyzing it once it will be analyzing it a few times. So if it happens again the next day on Tuesday and you've got like say biscuits sitting there and it's three o'clock in the afternoon again and you're like, I'm taking my little break from the office because it's the afternoon, I'm going to spend 10 minutes and then you just reach for the food. Then you can look at the biscuit and be like, wait, I did the same thing yesterday with a donut. What is this doing for me right now? You know, so you start to pay attention to all the all the different factors, the thoughts you go through, the feelings that you have, what might have triggered it, and um, essentially why you're doing this uh, activity. And you've got to make notes about this kind of stuff as well. So just or mental note, at least, at the very mm-hmm. least, is like, mm-hmm. this is what I was going through. Then it's something you can change. Because you've measured it, you can change it. So that's a really concrete example of that. And uh, then, you know, if you want to extend that out to other areas of your life, is uh, bringing awareness around sleep, uh, bringing awareness around your nutrition in general. Is like, uh, are you eating super fast? Do you have, um, why are you eating all those different things? You've got to make a, got to become aware of that as well. Mm. Uh, how well you're hydrating? It's just, it's a process of awareness. So it's, um, you are putting yourself under more uh, mental load by doing that, but you kind of have to because you, you have to be conscious of what you're doing to ultimately uh, to consciously move into a better place and then that to be your new subconscious. It's just, mm-hmm. again, we talk about every time it's about improving your baseline and you can only improve your baseline if you're aware of where you are right now so that you can um, go up, uh, move up. And we were talking about it earlier in the week as well, you know, about you know how you define the process and awareness is a massive part of that. So people have to bring awareness to the actions that they are participating in and doing it in a non-judgmental way and then ask themselves a the question, is this serving me for my long-term um, place that I want to be in, for my long-term yeah. health, or is it taking me a step backwards? And then answering that question honestly, and if you say, actually, it's taking me a step backwards, all right, let's figure out how we can change that now. So what's a different activity can you, you can do? Because that's why it's important to ask all those questions around why you ate that donut. Because you even have to ask yourself, was I even hungry? And if you weren't hungry, then it's like, okay, maybe I can instead drink a sip, have a sip of water or do a different activity. Something that's going to take me away, break that cycle, that habit that I've built up. Because a lot of these things that we do are habitual. We will get hunger signals at the same time every day because our body is wired on circadian rhythms. And if you're eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner at roughly the same time every day, then you generally tend to build up the habit to eat. Um, at that time, even if you start to build awareness and you realize you weren't even actually hungry to eat at that time. So there's that, uh, it's a massive process of awareness that you have to go through and measure it so that you can change it. And uh, you got to do that um, for other facets of your life, but start off with the thing uh, that's uh, the biggest, uh, biggest thing holding you back. Mm, that's so interesting, bro. That's so interesting. I think that that can help a million people, man. A billion people. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. just to just to take that time to self reflect, um, mm-hmm. and and it's it's almost like when you set the goal, you again, like we talked about at the start of the conversation, you have that end sight in mind. Like, mm-hmm. I want to be a, I want to be a leaner, fitter version of myself. Okay, right. Well, does the leaner, fitter version of myself reach for those biscuits? I'm doing that right now. So I'm, I'm also doing, I'm, I'm actually currently doing the reps as the older, more worn out, less energy efficient, less aware version of myself. I'm not doing the reps. It's the same as the wolf you feed, right? There's so many different mm-hmm. facets to this, right? I'm doing, I'm doing those reps that I've done for years and years and years. And at the end, they led me to become unhappy, unfulfilled, um, yo-yoing through life, thinking that, okay, I'm doing great one day. And the next day, I'm like, I want to have a binge and I want to be alone and I want to, like go to go to some supermarket and just cram my my trolley full of all the shit that I want and then just run home and eat it all. It's like that. There's so many unhappy unhealthy habits there, and um, it's it's again keeping keeping full awareness, a full understanding of where you want to go, and then 
relaying that with sorry aligning that with where you currently are now and then mm-hmm. just moving forward and then just kind of acting yeah. on it and being like you know what this is this is this is exactly how i want to live my life and like you said celebrating the wins so as soon as you as soon as you see those coffee that the, the donut kind of come show up in your workplace you're looking at it and you'll be like okay i know what i normally do when this happens mm-hmm. like it's literally it's that level like I, I've, I've had times where i've walked through asda and like there's there's that one aisle where it's just like loaded full of crisps and chocolates and, and like all the confectionaries right and so you just yeah. see that and you think yep yeah, that's my trigger like when i see those packets like i want some marshmallows i want some this i want some that i want some whatever but there's power in seeing it and being like mm, i'm just exactly. off like i don't need that i'm walking straight past it and um yeah you know you're you're almost walking right to your goal that's literally a physical manifestation <laughs> yeah. you walking past the uh the old version of you who would have reached out and spent money and, and spent time and spent like your life doing the things you don't want to do you know what i mean aligning with things you don't want to align with but now you're moving straight towards the things you do want to align with and um there's so much power in that because like we talked about it so many times in the podcast but it's the same it's the same things um you you it's that escape velocity thing right it's at the start it's difficult so you almost need a lot of fuel you almost need a lot of uh yeah. A lot of things to to anchor you and say okay in my day right now i do x y and z either i set my alarm and i don't get up on the first time um i i i I rush to get to work so i don't get to eat breakfast on time when i get to work i'm hungry so i reach for that donut there's there's all these facets so if we can be aware of all three of these points then we can tackle it on a multifaceted approach not have any one of them screw us we can kind of be ahead of all of them and in that we gain more momentum in the day in the moment and we realize that at the end of the day which is like the day is like a microcosm of your life you've done so much better you feel so much better yep. you can look at yourself in the mirror and be like i killed it today i did so well i can sleep well i can i can know that yeah. tomorrow i can build on this you know i mean i did something good for myself it all stems all comes from that one thing that be aware of who you are be aware of where you want to go and uh get on your mission man Completely, man. And as you say, uh, each small action, no matter how small, if it's moving you in the direction you want to go in, it's is giving you're taking your power. You know, you're getting more powerful. You are you are supercharging your superhero. Basically, it's uh, you're becoming super saiyan, man. This is this is going down. And uh, yeah, buddy, ain't nothing but a peanut. (laughs) (laughs) And why i'm key uh, like if anybody knows is like with the language that i'm using i'm saying stuff like where you want to go um because it's not right it's not wrong it's not good it's not bad if if i'm saying to you that you choosing to eat the donut is a bad decision you don't need that guilt you know you don't need that shame you don't need to feel bad about it it's just a decision that you made it's a very tricky thing to be able to look at the decisions we're making from a as neutral place as possible because we attach so much to them is like, Oh man, um, I, I know I shouldn't have eaten that donut, but I did anyway. And I feel terrible doing it. And then how is that serving you? Instead of being like, I did it. I can move forward from this. Instead, we choose to beat ourselves up a lot more about it than we, uh, than we should have done. Uh, then, then is ideal. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't like to use the word should It's more, um because should is kind of like you know you're enforcing something on yourself i should have done this i should have done that it's like no no there's a decision that you could have made and you're either aligning with the one that's going to get you where you want to go or you're aligning with the one that's getting you where you don't want to go just make the choice and don't be upset about the choice that you made because you have to because once you're aware then it's more of uh, there's less you can i feel like you can attach less um uh, less emotion to it um, because the more aware you are you realize it's it's just like a it's it's a decision you, yeah you can just remove yourself from it a little bit basically and objectively observe it so mm. it becomes less of a thing where you're putting all of your emotion into it and then when you do that you can ultimately feel more proud more proud of the decisions that you make when you realize that you're making decisions aligned with whichever wolf you want to feed basically so it's never about what's right or wrong it's not about what's good or bad it's what's what's moving you in the direction that you want to go in Mm -hmm. and and that isn't to say that you know what that's the common thing that people think about uh, um 
personal trainers or having personal training or going through a lifestyle change it's like all or nothing 100 percent in or you're or you're out or you are uh, you're not allowed to do certain things you know you're not allowed to eat certain foods you're restricting yourself from certain activities you have to go to bed at 10 and wake up at five you know it's like there is no strict rule about how you do this it's you um there isn't because it, it, that's the that's the common misconception around receiving personal training and um, making that lifestyle change when really it's about being on a spectrum and you can have that donut you can have those crisps you can eat that pizza you can have that burger as long as you've made it fit into who you who you ultimately want to be so mm -hmm. it could be you know in the beginning it could be you're coming from a place where when you objectively measure it 20 percent of your diet is not serving you well uh, sorry 80 percent of your diet is not serving you well but 20 percent is so okay great we're going to try and make that 20 percent a bigger portion we're going to try and make it 30 percent 40 percent 50 percent but that's the point we're not going from 20 percent to 100 percent because that's not sustainable you haven't really learned anything through that process because it's almost like it's just been imposed on you and like you get like fitness challenges and stuff and nutrition challenges, you know, 21 day challenge, 28 day challenge. They're helpful to get you moving along and kickstart you. But in most cases, if nothing goes beyond that, you're just back at square one because it's just, um, it's just too much too soon. Too wrong, so what needs to happen is, is approach it from that. I'm at 20% uh, where it's serving me in the direction I want to go to the body that I want to have, to have the confidence that I want to have, to feel as healthy and energized and uh, as I want to be. Okay, I'm going to up that to 30%. Okay, so that's going to be probably two extra, two meals extra a week where I make a better decision for myself than a decision that serves old me. And then you do that for a week and you're like, okay, that's a new baseline. Then you build it up to 40%. And then there might even be at times where you're like, you know what, I'm ready to go all in based on the efforts that I've put in and um because of the results you're seeing and you realize okay i can do th this is how well i can this is how far i can go just on 40 percent effort imagine if i put in 80 percent effort imagine i put in 90 100 and then you just start to see that you know, your your life moving in uh, in the upward trajectory mm -hmm. uh, quicker. but uh, you gotta you gotta approach it with awareness you gotta approach it not got to but you develop the kind of non judgmental aspect to it, which I think is a part of awareness. I think that's an intrinsic part of awareness. When you're building awareness, you are not judgmental over your actions. You're just observing them and then deciding whether they're good for you or not good for you. Mm -hmm. And then building building it up so your baseline is getting higher and higher and higher and higher. So true, bro. So, so true. That's a great way of looking at things. Um, there's, you know, there's, there's so many opportunities you see like in your day where you have different examples of people around you and you want to mm. align with different facets of diff of these different people um mm. and then i think it's a it's a case where a lot of people out there need those core few things to say when we're going to focus on these things if, if we if we were going to give you like a blueprint and say there's and really the body gives us it gives us the the answers right it's like mm. the systems that we talked about a couple of weeks ago classic so it's the digestive system then it's like the musculoskeletal system then it's like all these other things like the, the sleep and regenerative side of things you, you could segment it into those things stress uh, adrenal uh, um, central nervous system kind of thing um and then for people to take away and be like this like one aspect like, okay how you move this is something that we're, we're both kind of into and, and we work with um do you feel entirely good with all of it like obviously then then, then um, at the start you're gonna you're gonna resonate with some of the things we're saying and be like okay well i like i feel fine when i walk but when i try and do a squat everything hurts okay right well how do we how do we break that down into into knowing more about it increasing your awareness around it and uh then aligning you with where you know you want to be you know what I mean? There's this, and that, that same process for everything through your life is just going to slowly give you that head of steam that you're talking about to, to just move you forward, move you forward in the, in, 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 in more in, into a direction where you're, you're just much happier. You're much happier. And you having been gifted the process can then gift the process. You know what I mean? This, this, this is the, the, the ultimate win is that we're not in it for me. We're not in it for us. We don't want to be, we don't want to be the most aligned people in the world. We want to help you, be the most aligned person in the world so you can move 
your your family forward, your friends forward, your your people forward. You know, what I mean? at the end of the day, that's that's the win for all of us in this. You know, what I mean, like yep. that, that's why we do what we do. You know, because we are you. Like it's one thing. You know, what I mean, if, yeah. if, if there's like if there's like one person left behind, then we didn't do our job. You know, what I mean, like that that's yeah. that's the, that's the why. Yeah, man. Is uh, yeah. is uh, you talk about Muhammad Ali? Is the other quote? I don't know. I don't even know if he said it, but it was he. I know he popularized it at least. He's like me, we, just those mm. two words, right? So, me, we, we, we're, we're all one, basically, is yeah. the idea. So, I, we do what we do so that you get, you get to yeah, you get to be a better version of yourself. You know, it's like mm. uh, cause there's there's no, there's a big thing as well. There's no shame in admitting that is uh, that you're not happy with where you're at, and um, and you yeah. just move forward. Yeah, man. Yeah, the, the shame is not admitting it. The shame is not admitting yes. it. The shame is kind of exactly. being stuck. And uh, and I see this in my family a lot. I see kind of like this like uh, old school, I have no weakness like yeah. approach sometimes. And you think, you know what? No, you're you're broken and you mm. need fixing. It doesn't matter that you're that you're a elder statesman of our family. Mm. Like you've had stress on your body and you've had the the to bear the weight of a family or to bear the weight of a of a, of a dynasty like an asian household right like it's a big mm -hmm. thing sometimes right and um you've had to show no weakness for, for so long that no one's had no one's been able to approach you with this are you okay like do you mm -hmm. need help no, that just doesn't happen you know for a lot of our for a lot of our elders they will live their entire lives and get to the end of it and then just be like i'm broken like i just i just need someone to just take this take this burden away from me right because i can't do it anymore mm -hmm. and that that I'm kind of going very global with this, right? But it, it, there's, there's so many instances of this where where people who are in positions of power often show that they're okay and they, they're kind of coping. And, but really, there's nothing, it's nothing's like set in stone there to say that they're, they're absolutely fine. You know what I mean? Like it almost takes somebody like ourselves to, to do what we've done with ourselves and then go home to our parents, go home to our mums and our sisters and our fathers and whatever and say, like and just see them almost like just see somebody operating in the way they're operating and be like i think that you need help with something and this this is kind of you'll have this you'll have this sense when you're around people where somebody's struggling with something and you kind of know you know off the bat that you know what if we if we had a bit more of a handle on your weight if we had a bit more of a handle on on the way you think about training if we had a bit more handle on your routine away from work be it you get home and you sit on the sofa all day night well then you're going to have the ability to cope with your next day and that that day for you may be about going to see clients for them it may be kind of like looking after a family of 10 kids and we don't know we don't know the struggles people go through but really there there are these like check markers that if we get these things in place we can help we, we can just basically reduce the overall stress that your body goes through and in doing that there's so many um so many benefits so many pluses that you may not even be aware that you you could be uh be receiving you know what i mean yeah completely man is the yeah. truth is is uh it's like i have i've tried to figure out because it's always one of those things which like it can sound like a good thing to say and um but people are like no nah, nah, it's just it's like but it's true is where uh, vo your vo when you're vulnerable is where you find your power because you you admit to yourself that there's something that you need to do better for yourself and that can only and then when you start to take action that's propelling you forward so you're becoming more powerful because you've been vulnerable so massive it's massive, um, man. yeah and it's true it's like it's definitely a gener it's probably i mean there's definitely a generational thing going on there where you know you just can't can't show that um weakness and i i don't know i don't know about that life right i just i know it's been difficult because you know we've got parents who are like immigrants basically and uh, they've hustled to make it work and so we know that um it's a tough thing but um it's in so we could yeah so we can't really i don't know if like uh you can't really judge it as well right we can't really mm. ju uh, like judge to be like uh you you need some help why are you getting help kind of thing because <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, you know if you live that way for 30 40 50 years like 
you like this is just the way things are mm. whereas we're in a we're in a good position where our the people of like our you know our family our um, ascendants who have come before us have kind of laid that groundwork for us so we can be safe in asking those questions of ourselves mm. and that's and that's a powerful place to be coming from as well where it's just everybody before us has built up the baseline yeah. so that we can be better and then too, right, it's pretty much on us to do the same thing for the future as well right definitely definitely i, th I think there's so much power in in what you just said in, in regard to those people that came before us laying the, the foundations but mm. now like you said we've come to a place where we can sit and reflect and we can read and we can educate ourselves in mm. in a way that they would have never had the time or the all the circumstance to do but now mm. it's like it's on us to use what we now know use our power to affect them because because yeah. it's like a jigsaw puzzle right it's like somebody kind of paves the way it, it, it and, and then and then we would in turn kind of respond with what we can respond with we can't give them life back but we can give them a better quality of life and that that is is what we kind of hope to do i mean obviously like every asian i can speak only for ourselves I and mean, like mm. it's it's kind of it's kind of intrinsic that we always want to kind of retire our parents right i'm sure yeah. this is the same through through every 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 um culture i don't mean to just like pick on just us but obviously we are <laughs> from the same place but i mean um like <laughs> brown and brown right <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, like that, that's the a one thing, time right? that racism works is when we do it for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do it to ourselves. <laughs> yeah, man. yeah, that, that, that's that's the that, that that's the the way we can uh, kind of back effect. You know what I mean? Like they, they've kind of they've kind of laid the full they they their foundations, but you know we need to kind of do our bit and uh, mm. and and pay back the favor. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, mm. fully. Mm. Uh, is um, yeah, I didn't know where I wanted to take that. That's mm. that's perfect. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know how we got there, but um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, I know that's our, that's our podcast, isn't it? It's just kind of uh, <laughs> yeah. talking about it and going for it. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think kind of seeing people as people is a big mm. thing. Like people kind of like fall into these roles. Like my mom, kind of, I talked to her sometimes, and she she can sure she would talk about her life, and it's such a crazy life coming from like mm. getting married at the age of like twenty twenty one to a person you've never met before the other side of the world and now you end up on the other side of the literally the other side of the world where you've come from kenya and it's sunny or every day and you don't know what radiators are like she said this to me earlier she was like, i didn't i didn't know what a radiator was i came to the uk wow. and it was freezing and it was november and there was radiators on and she always like what's a radiator and like you say that and she's like it's like what the, what do you mean what's a radiator it's a, it's a radiator you know what I mean? and like that that's the kind of and then then they have like a life and all of a sudden we arrive and it's like mm. just deal with it you know what i mean like, that that's kind of the 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 hardy attitude that they've kind of had to have um but yeah man when, when you hear it you just think what there's 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 very many there's many uh differing forms of life you know what i mean there's not mm. just kind of the one that, that we have but uh, but still the underlying thing is that with understanding with awareness of, of kind of what you do know and what you don't know maybe what you're not aware of um mm. you can make whatever life you do have much livable for yourself and, and everybody around you yeah completely man completely mm -hmm. like, the thing the, the the thing that you said there made me think of a few things which could like lead off on a uh, on a bit of a tangent mm. it's like how because there's, I, th I feel like there's certain things that are just truths, which is like, um, so you're like, you know, your mom moving to different country, end up having a family and then just getting on with it. And she basically built up a baseline, a higher baseline through consistent effort, hard work day to day. Not like anybody's watching, just doing the business because I got I got a family I want to take care of. Mm. Increasing the baseline so that you 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 can come into the world and be in a much better position than when she started the, when she started out in the world, right? And that's like um, and because it's not glamorous and because it's never going to be something that's ever documented 
for example, you know, the journey, <laughs> the journey of your mother, even though it would be extraordinary, like every, everybody's actions are extraordinary on, on some level. And because she's not going to be like somebody who's like ultra famous is mm. not going to be anybody who's ever asked for an opinion on how to, how to do something successfully. Also probably won't be able to articulate why something worked out. Right. Be true. Very true. And, so, and so that's, uh, whereas we, we can, we're mm. at that stage where we can mull over those things and start to articulate why things work. And so there's certain things to me, which are just kind of like truths in humanity, which we don't, we've basically never really had the need to articulate it up until now. And this is what I was chatting about Sam with a little bit um, earlier on. So we did our own like fight companion, right? Like we watched the UFC and um, like me, son, Musti and, um, and Sam. And then when that finished, we ended up chatting for like two and a half hours afterwards about freaking <laughs> It was crazy. It was just like, we just, have you seen it? Do you know the results? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, I know, I know the results. I know the results. Oh, yeah, yeah. man. Like, like Ferguson just got fucking mauled, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Just had it. and it's just, we, so we finished and we were like, started talking. <laughs> I don't even know what we started talking about. Oh, I think it was like, Smith had been having some thoughts about, um, uh, what is it? Like he's been, he's reading a book and it's about uh, like essentially patterns in humanity, like the principles of mathematics and, and like breaking down, um, thought patterns and how there are certain inconsistencies that arise that cannot be explained by models um, that I'm going to fuck this up because it's the first time we're having a conversation about it properly, but it's just basically there's certain things that we do in life where we can explain things on through that ax axiomatic theory, which is if we know these to be truths, but then there's certain things which kind of create a a loop around themselves, and mm. and they they kind of like mess with the mess with the idea of consistency, and and so there's never like a system which will encapsulate the consistencies and the inconsistencies and be able to explain it all away, and and part of that is. And so the reason, like, and then we ended up talking about AI and then we ended up talking about like human condition and stuff like that. It was like, holy crap, it's like th three hours later. It's like, what's, what's happened here? Deep. And, yeah, exactly. And so what was interesting about it, because it's like, uh, so we ended up talking about how there's certain things which, you know, we just kind of know. And uh, we, when we start to think about it, we start to realize, oh, like, you know, here's, a, here's an inconsistency here or here's something here. And, and it ties in with a little bit with the book I've been reading as well. Like I showed you last week, the secret life of the mind. Mm. And what's super cool about that is uh, like the first part of the book, which is the only part I've got through so far is the origins of thought and essentially, you know, uh, do babies, uh, like what are our pre the premise of the book is like, what are our predispositions? What can we learn about our predispositions to help us uh, basically make, uh, use them to make better decisions and stuff because it's about thinking, feeling and decision-making and how we have the, um, we have an innate capacity for developing concepts, whether it's in mathematics or logical reasoning or morality language, it's actually innate within us it's structured like is within us on some level to be able to create concepts around this thing. And the reason we know it's within us on some level is because they've shown it in like newborn babies and kids and toddlers where they cannot explain their reasoning, but they show that they understand what morality is and they show that they understand uh, mathematics as well. So as an example, um, the way you can tell what's going on with a kid uh, who can't speak yet so a newborn baby let's say is by looking at their gaze you know what are they paying more attention to and in the book they've described an experiment where they have basically got like say like three flowers on an image and then they keep showing something coming up in threes to the uh, to the baby like image of threes coming up and uh, uh, and then let's say then they change the number and there's four of this one thing that's coming up so it's four flowers that are shown on this image and then what they do is put them side by side and on average what happens is the baby ends up looking at the image with four flowers more than they do with three because they've seen everything come in threes 
and then the one with four is thrown in, that doesn't fit the patterning. That's out of sync with what they've seen coming. And um, it's like, here's an extra thing. It's got nothing to do with colors. It's got nothing to do with anything else except for the fact that there's four things on here now instead of three. So mm -hmm. these are newborn babies who are like weeks old who are having more gaze time with the thing that's got four things on it than with three. So basically it's, it's telling us that we have an understanding of mathematics. We have a concept of maths and some logic before we even know how to put that into words, before we even can make a freaking sound, right? And so there's certain things that we know to be, uh, we know to be, I guess is we know to be true, or there's certain concepts that we can build up without ever having to articulate them. And, uh, but we're at, so the reason why that, uh, I feel like it's kind of like, you know, back to, how your mom might not be able to articulate how she's created a level of success and extraordinary ability is because we don't, we've never really had to, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. uh, and we've never really known how to as well. And now we're in this phase in this existence in our um, time in life where we can analyze these things because all this information is relatively new and this mm. is what we can't learn. And, uh, and we kind of need that information now so that we can lead um, lead better lives given the kind of environment that we're in. Because before it was just like, so Sam made the point where you've got a farmer who just wakes up with the sunrise and goes to bed with the sunset. He's got no idea about circadian rhythms, but he knows that this is just a natural thing for him to do. Can't articulate that it has any health benefit to him, but he's gonna be healthier by seeing the morning sun and seeing the evening sun. Uh, because of the effect it has on our circadian rhythm. So our, our bodies run on circadian rhythms. Um, every cell in the body has a clock, basically. And we can, and the biggest way to influence that clock, uh, which is uh, by being exposed to light. And that's why if we look at the screen on our phone in the middle of the night, it fucks with our sleep patterns. Mm -hmm. And um, if we, if we, uh, if we're not getting outside enough, if we're not getting enough natural light, that kind of thing is always is always messing with us, and and that plays out in terms of proper mental health. Uh, physical health is affected by that as well, so it has massive repercussions. But that farmer from back in the day doesn't know that information; doesn't need to know it. He just needs he just knows that's the right thing to do. But because we're so nowadays kind of far removed from that way of living where we're built up in cities and we kind of have to be told why something is good for us. So like someone like me, I have to be told why setting a goal is good for me from that neuroscientific perspective. Because when I understand it like that, it's like, oh, that makes so much sense now. Mm. I need to change my relationship that I have with goals so that I'm actually more successful. Whereas back in the day, it was just like, my immediate goal is to, to eat. <laughs> Let's just say you didn't need to put that into perspective it was just something that you had to do and then the rewards kicked in as you did that and the the way of living was uh, more beneficial because of that uh, because of that outcome that you were always looking for automatically now we kind of have to we've gone beyond that again we've improved we've changed our baseline as a civilization and we need to we need to go beyond just just looking for food we actually have to look for that purpose and that meaning in our life so that we can be effective and aligned and feel like we're doing something valuable and doing something meaningful. And so we actually have to have all these things broken down for us. We actually have to study them and be able to articulate them so that in this day and age, in this way of living, we can, we can live, we can live as best as we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. That's so, so, that's so vast. <laughs> well, you, well, you, but it's so true though it's so true I, I love the analogy i love the the way you connected that too to get those two things together because mm. it legit makes so much sense and then you can kind of look at it like um uh, there's so many ways i can go with this mm. <laughs> um, pick, pick one right <laughs> pick one just go um yeah. like it was a very it was a very like it seems in like a very distant link because it is in a way because yeah. it was just like I had three things that came up all at once and I was like they kind of related but I'm just <laughs> going to talk about 
to see what happens. Exactly. See what so, happens. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you've, you've kind of got um, the branch where back to the parents thing and you said like different phases of your life will elicit and will will require you to focus on different things so Mm -hmm. now we've both got parents that kind of in that twilight kind of like retirement age um where they're they're chilling more and they're kind of my mom i've noticed about my mom that like a couple of years ago she would she was she was in a place where um a bit more kind of life stress a bit more kind of unsure kind of where things are going to go but now we're, we're settled where we're good um to our like control everything is, is, is in the same place we, we know we know where we're at so it's allowed her to down regulate that sympathetic response so she's not up and running and kind of doing and thinking about kind of life in a, in a crazy fast-paced way so now most evenings we'll sit down and we'll open our fast together and she'll start talking and she'll just kind of she won't even know she does it but she does do it and i've noticed this about herself about her where she'll just start kind of like coming forth with like, oh, when, when, when I kind of had this happen to me or that happened or, or I remember this time and this person, whatever. And it's like, oh, wow, you've, you've lived a whole life before I've even known you, you, you were a human. I, mean, I knew you as yeah. a mum, but now I know you as a human. Like yes. that, that, that change in pace has allowed her to articulate this. And mm. the way that we kind of use it is that like I'm in a position now where maybe like if family had their way i'd be married and kind of have my kind of like my my version of her story told to me so i'm kind of using her as i'm I'm kind of almost being more receptive to it because there's there's times in my life when i would have been like crazy kid going to go to the gym get out of my way i don't need to hear about this and now i'm slower i'm kind of a bit more like i'm just thinking about that more you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i think that that's how those two things can kind of kind of link together where I'm more receptive to it. She's more, um, she's more able to access that part of herself because of the change in pace in life. And uh, yeah, that, that was kind of one place where my, my mind went with it. But there was uh, there was a few others that are definitely going to come back to me. Um, <laughs> yeah. I just thought, like you know, the way you were kind of linking like one concept to the other, you don't really know how it kind of affects. Is is that what you were roughly saying? Um, like, like, with with Go with on. you you said how um uh nah it's I'm, I'm gonna be fishing with this but i i, I don't really know uh, the, when, when you were talking there was a certain part of it where i was thinking like you know how you have like old school boxes and they would have gone mm. for a jog they would have gone for that long kind of stretch jog and mm. everyone will say from a scientific perspective you're a boxer you're not a runner but they will say that you know what from a mental state mm that helps me be a better boxer so you mm-hmm. can kind of link those two back together whereas you don't need like we, we wouldn't say that from a specificity perspective that you're throwing a left hook and you're throwing a right hand and you're throwing an uppercut and you're throwing like head movements there's no place in that for jogging you know what i mean mm-hmm. but you can kind of tie those two uh, you can kind of tie it in in a different way that's something mm-hmm. where my mind my mind went with what you said but i don't know yeah, yeah. i can't remember how it tied in in the hope that it came back but it didn't come back but uh yeah man yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's <laughs> interesting super interesting. <laughs> yeah yeah it doesn't matter i like that as well because um uh, like yeah early part of when i started learning more about specificity and being like ever like yeah you just if this is your sport you only need to train that element for your sport and 90% of the time is true but then you've got that case where there's not like uh, you're a boxer but there's nothing else in that boxer's case nothing else is getting him into a better mental state than going for a run then it's like okay mm-hmm. on net on net it's got nothing to do with uh, how uh, well mostly speaking it's got nothing to do with how well he's going to perform in the ring but he gets this much value out of it then yeah okay let's put it in the program you know let's put it in training because if we take it out he's going to be a worse boxer that's basically the decision you gotta make with that right and um, and there is there is the physiological you know the physiological benefit which is like you know building that baseline cardio which is more difficult to um potentially more difficult to do with just boxing training because um it's like the very like how you're controlling the variables but but basically it's um yeah even though it's got nothing in theory it's got nothing to do with boxing net net is going to make him a better boxer so you kind of throw that in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah no, this is, this is 
it's, it's there's a few other things you can kind of go with, with like in terms of just having a mental state which is in a calm place it allows you to to keep things slow and even retain information better so like that mm-hmm. that jog sometimes like we'd, we'd like this back to Sylvia and, and the sessions we have there like mm-hmm. will be wiped out by the warm-up but that makes us listen better when we're actually drilling so we're not mm-hmm. kind of erratic and we're not kind of having that hype behind our behind our kind of uh, behind our training and it helps us train better and retain information better as well you know what i mean so yeah. it's, it's, it's weird how like one thing that seems com- seemingly unlinked can be completely linked in a, in, a, in a roundabout way yeah yeah i think it's like uh, in those cases it's like setting it's kind of setting the standard or setting what uh, what's required of you during the session as well like um if you're gonna if you're gonna be pushed that hard then yeah you better you better pay attention right mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, the, that's the kind of that's kind of the, one of the things as well which is uh if you expect if if yeah if you push that hard and then you get to the the drilling part and you're not really like you know i don't know i think what i'm getting at is is like if you're not paying attention then you can't expect um you you're you're essentially going to get punished for it by mm, mm. Uh, by your training partners not because they're out to punish you but because your um uh your level has dropped and yeah and then yeah. that, that kind of what you've just said there kind of let me give me the little string back to the conversation in the sense that okay, okay. it's it's if you're if you're not paying attention that's akin to you going through life with lacking awareness yeah and you yeah. you not you not and in that setting it's it's jiu-jitsu club but in mm-hmm. the setting of life it's it's like i'm i'm waking up at the wrong time every day i'm being late to work every day and, and now i'm fired you know what i mean that's yeah. how that's how kind of you get punished in life but mm-hmm. kind of linking it all back to, to the actual conversation it's there's 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 times in your life to push and there's times in your life to kind of con- re- retract and relax um and i think being fully aware of those times is is the thing that people need to uh really hone in on and it's something that yeah. i i i definitely I'm, i feel like i'm fully aware of this place that i am in my life right now but mm-hmm. it's come through me slowly going through my own journey in terms of the weight loss and being or being aware of that and being aware of the implications of me doing it and me not doing it and kind of just be in that dialogue you know what i mean be in that dialogue in your in your mental space where this is a tough conversation to have but i need to have that tough conversation like we said earlier to make any kind of progress you know what i mean that yeah. that's that's the that's the process that that you have to kind of go through in that sense is if you don't go through it you're going to be left with this like basic existence where you don't really know how to traverse it because you've not really been deep into it. I mean, you need yeah. to kind of spend time with those thoughts um, or even spend time with the people like yourself who kind of question those thoughts in me. And this, this, this is, this is, this is the, uh, the, the most important thing. Like again, again, that links back to awareness of people you spend your time with, right? We always know that that five things people, you, you, you are the product of the five people you spend the most, you spend the most time with. Um, that is, I think it's so true. It's scary. Sometimes yeah. you see, you see people that just like, they, the, you just don't have any kind of decent positive influence and mm. before you know it whatever kind of way you were before you just you end up deprogramming your 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 previous nurturing from your life and you end up kind of going in a way that may not be favorable or may not be the way that you actually wanted to go originally but you yeah. uh, you end up going along with it and you don't even know how you got there and it's 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 and, and the, the prerequisite to that could have been that you didn't lack the confidence to kind of walk your own path and say no nah, forget you guys, I'm going to go on my own way. And if I'll be lost for a while, I'll be lost for a while. But I'd rather not mm. go down this path because it definitely isn't the way I want to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough thing. It's a tough thing to do because it's actually, that's another thing, which is, is hardwired in us to be with the tribe, you know, like uh, do what the tribe does. It's, um, it takes a special level of awareness to go, I'm not going to do what this tribe is doing because it doesn't serve me well. So I'm going to take it taking a different direction you're you're leaving your tribe and you're leaving yourself vulnerable it's a it's a difficult it's a difficult thing to do but when you do it when you develop the the courage to do it you are you even if it doesn't work out you're better off for it Mm. and the reason being is because you've been able to make that decision because you've been able to take that courage and you know that you can do that again that's that's what it comes down to and uh yeah it it can it's definitely like uh it, it it can definitely be in a place where it doesn't work out but you can you can make it happen again because you've 
because you're taking that step mm. is uh, that's the that's the power in that you got to realize that taking that step was more fulfilling for you even if the thing that you're going for even the reason that you stepped away f- from your tribe for didn't work out for you mm. doesn't matter you're still better off for it too right man too right because at the end of the day that's it's only going to lead you closer to where you want to be because you know you can step and it's mm-hmm. like if you if you know exactly what you're getting where you are um and that you can almost like close the book on that chapter and say like this is this is the end of this book i don't see any kind of progress in mm-hmm. in in this workplace in this like household situation in this family i don't see any kind of progress um either i either i kind of expand myself to to do what we've kind of done which is like you like i i kind of but did this thing where i obviously i left home went to london studied learned grew as a person then came back and uh i wanted to kind of impact like i, I said like my people um but then either you, either you stay where you are and you end up kind of not being fulfilled or you go and, and kind of you end up just kind of totally pushing away either way you're better off for yourself really at the end of the day just you end up affecting people around you differently also mm-hmm. yeah man mm-hmm. fully yeah, yeah. that's um that kind of that kind of made me think actually the whole um the whole talk of um because you've done it once before you have it in you to be able to do it again so it's mm. like because uh, uh that made me wonder because i've changed careers to do what i do all right and uh, like there's plenty of people who know me now who don't know that about me because they just look oh yeah this grinder who does you know health and fitness for a living they never knew that i came from a background of uh, being a tax analyst like some years ago and it just it confused the hell out of people you got it on your face right now as well it just confused you like what tax man what? <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> it's like i never worked for the man i'll, I'll make sure everybody knows that i was uh, <laughs> <laughs> i worked um yeah i worked in um worked in a holding company and uh you know doing uk tax computations and stuff for all the subsidiaries and, and there was uh yeah so i made the change uh, like very long story short made the change and um that's always something that's within me right it's mm. like i know i can do that was um that's what i was curious about with yours because like we know each other through jits and like it's been a couple of years now basically and uh, you know we hit it off but it's like okay i've known you for the last two years but then there's like the 20 26 years prior to that which is like you know what's uh who's uma like what's what's gotten to where he is right now i i was wondering if this like if this career that you're doing is what you thought you were always going to do or if it was you you had you were on a different path like did mm. you go to uni did you uh, how did it had you end up here um yeah man I, I went i went to uni for about two weeks and i realized <laughs> it wasn't for me i just left <laughs> i didn't go back and uh yeah that was genuinely what it was i was so like it was weird but it was weird like you're talking about alignment you're talking about kind of like um being being who you want to be like regardless of the tribe regardless of whatever and i remember like all the kids at my age then were obviously going off to uni and and doing that and i I got some good offers to some good unis but i wanted to stay close to home so i ended up going to my local uni which was teesside uni and i remember showing up on yeah i remember showing up on it was near 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 middlesbrough near newcastle and uh, i remember showing up on day one and being like yeah, I don't know about this. Like everybody just seems to be getting drunk and talking about how they want to just go in freshers and stuff. And I was just like, not about that life. I was yeah. not about that life. In the, I was like, where's the gym? Like, where's the yeah. weight room? Like, show me that way. I'll be there. You need me? Come find me there. Yeah, um, yeah that's true. And yeah, that was it. And like, I remember being like, I know I want to be a personal trainer. I didn't know. I didn't know what it took to be at that like we we the people that we kind of look at in the industry now i didn't know what it took to be that but i knew that i wanted to just be in that setting you know i mean i I knew i wanted that part of that life where there was a squat rack wherever i was going to work there would be a squat rack there somewhere you know what i mean like that that, that's that's what i wanted and um yeah just uh, go work at my old tax office man (laughs) i I will work here on the condition there is a squat rack in that office (laughs) just mental man does the, anyway. I, I just didn't have yeah i didn't have any other kind of basis in understanding myself but i knew that i knew that one thing pretty well that that was my my uh, to my core that was me you know what i mean like uh, and then when it was when i kind of got here it was like a lot of lectures and a lot of things about just just things i hadn't i had i had not i didn't have the the mental capacity to think about how this related me 
closer to where I wanted to be. I was like, I can just go direct line and be like, I want to be in the gym. So I'm going to go to the gym. Like that's, <laughs> that's where it's happening. It's not happening in a lab to me. Then it wasn't happening in a lab. It was happening with me being around people, being kind of immersed in that kind of world. And I was happy. I was happy. You know, mm. I, I had to fulfill kind of what I needed from my life at that time. So that's what I did. I, I dropped out of uni um, and started working part-time at Marks and Spencer's and then just cracked on with my PT qualification. Um, and then just from there, just started to work with, work with like people at the gym. And it was, it was, it was just mates. And then you'd be like, Hey, I'll write your program for you. I'll write this for you. I'll write that for you. Mm. Um, but I think, yeah, that, that yeah, uni time is, is, is one of those times where people kind of get pulled one way or the other. And some, I remember some of my mates who, uh, who maybe like seemingly flunked when it came to like GCSEs or A levels or whatever, um, they're, they're some of the most like, even in terms of like money in the bank, people that are the most successful people that I know right now, it's like, oh shit, like you, you, you caught, didn't really follow the system, but look at where you are now. You can mm -hmm. definitely provide for your family. You can maybe definitely go on a couple of holidays a year and be totally fine with it. You know what I mean? That that's, um, mm -hmm. that's a cool thing to see. And, and, and I think in, in saying that, what I mean by that is you don't need to follow the, 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 the beaten path. You can yeah. have the confidence to go on your own. And really that, that beating path is always going to be there. I can go uni tomorrow. You know, I can kind of like start the paperwork and I can turn back when they open again. Uh, I, can, <laughs> I can figure out how to, how to, how to walk that line. But um, yeah, there was just, there was just something like pulling me this way. Um, so yeah, I just followed it. And then here we are, man. Amazing, Ben. Uh, when, so when did, um, from what age did training become a big part of your life? Um, I think it started with, with, uh, uh, going boxing when I was about 16, 15, mm. 16. Yeah. And then the, the gym was above that. So it was just like, okay, get into, go, go up there. My dad would always, my dad would always be training up there. And he was like, he was the guy at the gym who would lift the most weights. That was my dad. Wow. That was, that was just that guy. And, uh, you don't need yeah. to see it. <laughs> oh, dude, it's, it's, it's scary. Right. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll drop this. Right. So, last year i think yeah last year he competed in kenya's strongest man no um, way yeah compete i've got pictures i'll show you i'll show you yeah for and sure. um he at the age of 59 he came i think there was a the field was like 20 odd competitors deep and i think he came eighth at the age of wow. 59 and like <laughs> i remember that so like the he told me afterwards he was like the the announcer was like this is the oldest competitor by about 23 years so what? he's smoking it like everybody else is obviously young and fit and whatever and this is just this, this old guy just being like i don't give a shit give me that squat give me that dead <laughs> and i think he, he ended up winning the squat with like a squat of like close to 300 kilos or i think over 300 kilos super strong guy man always been that guy like that's oh. that, that, like i can't take any credit for this the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the genetics have been woven for years you know what i mean like someone someone tells me oh, I, I had this thought when i was younger i was like someone tells me oh, like you have you have good genetics and you have a good thing really what you're saying is like my ancestors like thank you yeah, thank exactly. you very much like you you looked after me you know what i mean you made you made it so i could be like the way i am and, and be and be okay um yeah man. Bro, so that, that, don't that's... take nothing away from yourself though man you know that <laughs> genes only matter when you express them <laughs> yeah yeah you're right man that's so true that's so, but it's it's funny thing is that I, I look at my parents and I look at my, my dad's like this big hulking figure of a man my mom okay. is everything but that she's like she's <laughs> tiny like five foot nothing and <laughs> but hard as nails and it's like I, I look at that like if there's ever a time where i'm called on persevering it's like okay like engage mom power like that's that's that yeah. that staying power like i'm, I'm just gonna yeah. go through this but when Ain't i have no to kind of like smashes. mom smash <laughs> <laughs> that's the t-shirt right there mom smash. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah man that's it yeah, it's, it's it's proper interesting man proper interesting the uh what what kind of makes us up yeah what about yourself what 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 did you what was the first uh what was the first kind of training experience that you kind of got into and why did you stick with it oh first training experience that's a good question man um i haven't thought that far back uh hmm i think me and okay if i like trace it right back like mm. my parents did everything in their power so that we could so that we could just like run around <laughs> and just have fun nice. when we were kids nice so um there's a the first thing that comes to my mind is there's a picture in 
like in the staircase uh, next to the staircase in my parents house of me and sam running down a hill um i think i've got a ball in my hand like a, one of those you know blow up plastic balls oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, floaties. Like, yeah floaties is it i'm like i'm like five probably three or something and so there's there's always been there's probably always been something there and uh, they just made the effort to when uh whenever we expressed an interest in an activity they just made the effort to take us there i remember like my mom hates the heat it's really interesting it's like being indian mm. but just mm. can't handle the heat whereas i'm the opposite i freaking love the heat like give me heat yeah. and and i'm fine you know i'm like i'm in my happy place but it'll be like you know i'm like 11 years old sam's probably like nine years old and then my mates have just got into tennis i don't even know what it is so i go mom can we go play tennis at the <laughs> at the local park and it's just like gravel pit with a freaking net along it and uh, she's like yeah sure so she sits there in the height of the summer in the height of the day <laughs> letting her two kids play with uh, their two friends and i don't even know what tennis is but you know just getting into it and um you're just there with so, your football like play tennis <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like is this how you do it is this how you do it and uh, it's like when yeah 15 love what are you why stop telling me you love man i don't get it it was, like, uh, it was uh and so yeah so every time we did that and I, like you know got to like 13 got really into basketball oh, nice. uh, paying for the school basketball team making the county finals i re i remember actually that was my first experience of physical exhaustion that oh, i remember shit. which was <laughs> i i grew up i grew up tall quick i was like five nine at 12 or something oh, shit. And, uh, and then yeah just like the next two and a bit inches came over the next 10 years of my life <laughs> <laughs> that was it i just grew up real fast and i, was, and I basically got me uh, that was used to great effect in year eight where i would play <laughs> i would play post for basketball nice. so i would basically be the guy who just like couldn't shoot for shit but i'll catch the ball for you and when it's <laughs> yeah. up right but then when you get to the final and you realize holy shit there's dudes who are even bigger than me and i'm only like yeah. 30 like, how is this possible <laughs> and I pretty much played the whole game and oh, in a hot yeah. environment where the, the court was just, um, it was like humid and stuff. And then I remember coming home and just feeling absolutely fucked. Like I just couldn't, I was like, I don't want to move. I don't even want to talk. Oh, and so that was my first experience of like that kind of thing. So like, you know, doing basketball. With so we always got involved in whatever sport we just kind of fancied. And we played basketball for a few years for a while. <laughs> Sam played um, for a few years. And then, you know, football's always been a part of that, especially at secondary schools. So just like organized stuff. And then I think there's also when we got to about 15, 16, started getting interested in training, I think, mm -hmm. on some level. And I've always had it in me where like fundamentally I always want to do something right. So this is why it's kind of, uh, I get now why I am the way that I am with the training philosophy that I have. And what I was doing back then and how it relates mm, is really funny. Mm. Like uh, everybody would just like, you know, bench biceps, bench biceps. I was the one dude in the corner just doing calf races. <laughs> so shit. <laughs> and what the hell? Like, well, what are you training? What are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. It just feels like I should be doing other stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it feels right and I like it. Leave me alone. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> <laughs> like, and everybody's doing bench buys, bench buys, bench buys, because that's what you freaking know when you're like 16, 17 years old. <laughs> and then it was freaking hilarious, man. And then it was just something fundamentally in me, which was there's got there's there's got to be like a, a right way of doing something, yeah. right? And I've got to maybe incorporate the whole body into it. I don't know. And uh, it's just some, this weird thing. So uh, that that kind of makes me think of how uh, like I guess I am the way that I am now because. I've, in some ways I've always been that way on yeah. some aspects of it and then uh, yeah so we were just like always kind of active on some level but then proper got into lifting yeah. at like 19 so I think it was in my second year at uni I came back between my first and second year I trained for three months at home we had like a bench and we just started training and like we'd always have uh, the boys come over and we just like train together and stuff and that's when I went full whack bench buys, bench buys <laughs> at like 19 years old. And good I came days, back, good days. yeah, <laughs> man, I came back to, came back to uni. And then my housemate, um, who I also knew from the first year was like, the fuck happened to you, man? You just got like jacked <laughs> in three months. So I was like, that's what I did. I was like, really? Oh, thanks, man. That, that feels good to hear. Cause I've always been naturally skinny. Oh, and then, no. uh, 
yeah so it was pretty fun so i think that was it and then yeah i've always kind of like and then yeah so always kind of like had some some level of training going on and then when i finally decided like uh, you know the next five five six years basically went from was training at a gym was doing it to kind of um escape work and mm. uh, keep myself active and healthy and just really appreciate that and i would always read about it and i would always be like oh, okay this is what i got to do to bulk this is what i got to do to cut um i'll eat a little bit more here a little bit a little bit less there and then push came to shove and like you know it just realized that actually this is what i want to do basically and can i teach to other people i think i can mm. and then decided to and like there's um yeah there's a whole story there as well but that's basically what it came down to which was um uh, uh, moving into that and then when i finally got into the fitness industry it was like uh oh the kind of way that i've been training i started picking up like uh, innocuous injuries i was like oh i'm supposed to be strong I'm supposed to be healthy and fit why have i hurt myself and then realized that there's there's something that i fundamentally don't understand about mm. how the human body works and then i just kind of went down that path and then just ran with that and then um so and then became more about body training and just understanding function and movement and mobility and just human like movement patterns and and then coming back to incorporating that into proper strength training and um proper movement training proper dynamic movement and function and just basically having total body confidence in movement and uh and health is mm. uh paradigm that I shifted into so that started from like uh, I think it's always basically been at us is like mm. we've always our parents have done a great job of just always like making sure we were active and um and then it kind of it's always been there in the background basically yeah and then really made something of it when I decided to move into the industry yeah yeah man. That's, that's really cool that's really cool and definitely attest to having 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 been kind of like treated by yourself you know your mm. shit man <laughs> you know your <laughs> yeah. shit when it comes yeah. to like when it comes to it's true, bro. It's true. When it comes to diagnosing things and and like me coming to you and be like, oh, I've got a pain in my hip. Like it's never taken you more than one diagnosis to be like, I think it's this. Like let's try, let's trial this out. Let's kind of put your leg here, twist this up. Let's let's see if uh, if this gets some kind of feedback. And I always leave feeling like, oh shit, yeah, I feel better. Yeah. I'm off. I'm off. I'm off to go and destroy myself again. And I'll be back when I'm, <laughs> when I'm broken again. And uh, yeah, man, that's 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 a testament to you. Kind of that's it's deep you know what i mean it's deep in you you know what i mean you you've had those uh that want and you've had it from yourself because you've you've kind of got injured and then you've had to find your own answers and like mm. we tied all back to the conversation like you've had these things you've been aware of you've got to mm. find your answers and you can help somebody else mm. i'm that yeah, yeah. i'm that somebody else you know what i mean and um yeah man i think i think a lot of people can can listen to that and take a lot of like it's just self-actualization right the the the, 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 the subtext of what you just said there is like i had a problem i liked that this was something that i enjoyed doing so i went and aligned myself with that thing and mm. here we are today like i am yeah. going to send you and i can fix you too. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you yeah, gotta take man. responsibility too is um, yeah, yeah, yeah. i'll tell you is like that that period that was the awakening of me it was like i was just sleepwalking my way through otherwise mm. and um so it's like it was i was just kind of uh, i went to uni you know i did uh, I'm, I'm an economics grad from kent uni and it was just like i did it because you know a mate of mine who was a close friend of mine he was doing it and i started thinking yeah i could probably do that and it was like uh, there's some level of interest there but it's just not something that i gave too much of a shit about right and um <clears throat> and yeah m like s came out with a two one and then just did the usual thing of, okay, the next thing to do is probably look for a job in the most uh, secure industry, like accounts, finances, just do the normal, just do the usual thing. And I started doing that and then got a pretty good job, got a job where I had good prospects as well with a good company, worked with a great team of people. Um, they'd looked out for my development and I was there for a good two and a half years. Uh, and I'd worked a couple of years before that in like uh, just building up some accounting experience and stuff. And, uh, but when i was like you know basically about a year before uh about like yeah it was probably like a year before i'd uh at the beginning of the year so it was like end of 2010 is when i resigned from that and so it was basically at the beginning of 2010 where i started just like becoming a bit anxious and i'd never experienced that before and uh, mm. it was just like hmm 
what the hell is this feeling? I don't understand it. Started figuring it out. Started looking it up and I was like, oh, that's what it is. Hmm. Mm. Why the fuck am I anxious? And like, you know, waking up in the morning and just not feeling like I uh, want to go to work, that kind of thing. It's like kind of dreaded to take on the day. And it's not like, you know, anything's terrible about what I do. Like I said, like all those factors were there for it to be a good, successful career and stuff. But ultimately, when I figured it out, I was like, oh, shit, it's because I'm not aligned with what I actually want to do. I haven't thought about my life in the context of what do I actually feel like doing and what's worth doing. And because I wasn't doing that and I was getting this level of anxiety, which I didn't understand. And because I just basically wasn't doing that situational analysis of my life and mm -hmm. where it is, where I want it to be. And I'd never really done that. It was just kind of like moving along. When I finally did it, I realized this is not what I want to be doing. Um, I'm going to go head first, like jump out the window into personal training. Basically, I just realized I want to do this, but I sat on it for like six months. I was like, mm -hmm. do I really want to do this? Like, what's the pros and cons of this? You know, I have to convince also my parents at the time. It's like, I want to make sure that they know that this is going to be a good decision for me. And then, yeah, at the end of the year, I finally like, you know, bit the bullet. And like one of the scariest things I ever did was like walk into my manager's office at the time and just handed my resignation. And because I literally walked in, I took a step back and I was like, no, no, mm. keep walking. <laughs> and I, walked, and then I walked in, I was like, look, I had this conversation with you. And uh, yeah, it was a powerful thing to do. It was, uh, yeah, it was uh, just, yeah, basically since that moment, just haven't looked back, haven't looked, uh, haven't regretted a single moment of it. And that mm. was, uh, and that was a big, powerful thing to do because, I mean, I could be sitting here nearly pretty much 10 years later and be on a completely different trajectory and mm. i can imagine that anxiety would it would have just it would have just taken over my life yeah it would have been it would have been bad news and that's and that's what i feel is a problem a lot of the times is like we have anxiety because we're not aligning ourselves with uh who we who we want to be and where we want to be so yeah that was um that was that was big that was important yeah. that's so true that's so true and i, I was saying one of the podcasts earlier podcasts is like depression or like that kind of feeling is like um not living by your values i think mm. that's what it was and um yeah i think a lot of people out there can, can attest to that and, and like what what you've got there is people would see it as or oh, i in the past i can say bring it back to myself in the past would have seen it like oh i hate like kind of this feeling i hate this feeling but really that feeling is is just opportunity in disguise you know what i mean like mm. that that feeling yes. of like i'm i'm not fulfilled is is 100 percent um what you need to feel to change you know i mean you need to have that um that signal that tells you you're not on course like you're not on course if your life was a a uh a basketball shot or whatever like you need to have that signal to tell you you know what you're not you're not crying you're not really uh you're not going to make it you're not going to make it and how do you feel about that do you feel okay about it do you feel that you're okay about the fact that you're not going to make up on the 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 opportunity of your life to be some kind of success to be some kind of big um event or really you're just gonna kind of go through your days and you'd be miserable you know what i mean like if, if somebody if somebody read you back the story of your life when you finished it and was like um this is what you, you you'll amount to pretty much nothing like you'll earn about 30, 30k every year and you'll see you'll, you'll bank less than half of that and half of it you'll lose to the tax man and all that kind of stuff, you know. What I mean, like you just you just feel like pissed off. And no, I, I've got I've got I've got a story I want to tell, and um, mm. really, like this this is this is how I want to live. It. And that doesn't have to be some kind of grand. You know, I, I don't dream of being Donald Trump. You know what I mean? I just do. I just dream of kind of living my life in a in a in a in a way that can support me and my kind of vision, and then the people around me. Like it, it, it's 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 just as simple as that. And. I think you've got to you've got to pick up on those signals, otherwise we're all at risk of kind of just running through life and, and not being happy at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, man. completely. Is there's that honesty, honesty with yourself, basically. Mm. It's like uh, it doesn't even have to be for anyone else. Um, it's just, um, yeah, it's just doing it for you, doing it. Mm. It could be for someone else, I guess. I mean, what I'm trying to say is. Uh, whatever that motivating factor is um if you can't if like if you don't do the peterson thing of take responsibility of yourself as if you're someone you're supposed to be caring for mm. then find the person you you are caring for or like look at the person you are caring for is like, okay who do i need to be 
uh, to be able to care for them better. That's yeah, such a good point. I, I went to my, my mum this week, right, and she's been talking about she wants it, she wants this kitchen and she wants to kind of like change the way our kitchen is and stuff. And mm. I just told her, I was like, look up on like Pinterest or like YouTube or or whatever. Just give get get yourself some ideas of what you want because it will focus me in terms of how I need to go and spend the next year of my life. So I'll mm. know that there's this there's this outlay that we have to account for that will be happening. Mm. That I'm I'm happy to work for. And again, the, uh, the, then I can go and align myself with, I've got to work X amount of hours and I've got to put in this many, this many shifts at the gym and I've got to upsell this much and, and just bring uh, that part of my life into alignment with this goal that I've now become aware of. And mm. I think the more, the more aware we are of that in the present, the more it can kind of like, few, like push our path, our direction, right? I mean, things back to the government thing we were talking about earlier. Like if, you, if they know that they're all, they're going to have an extension on their house. I mean, we've got to work a little bit harder. We've got to do all these things um, and upskill in the ways we need to upskill to make that mm-hmm. a, a possibility. You know what I mean? That That's the that's the thing that people need to, uh, sh- in my opinion, need to understand is that, e- yeah, we've, we've covered it and covered it. <laughs> so yeah. many different avenues, right? But yeah, having that having that goal today to to lead your tomorrow, I think is is, is super necessary in my end. Yeah, man, super necessary. Yeah. So I have that goal. It's, um, it's and you just said something, and I was about to. Oh, it's just, something just came to me, and it just left. Did the same like, thing. Uh, planning the kitchen and YouTube, and look at look at uh, look up the look up the goal, so you can kind of was, refresh in your mind to like, use today as planning for tomorrow. And use today. I was just before that. Oh man, it was just like something oh, okay. came to me, and I was just like, oh, it just came away. It was like literally fleeting, but whatever. <laughs> But, um it's oh it was just more like uh, uh yeah it was something that you were saying but i think it was just like uh, yeah essentially oh that's it we're saying the same thing is like we're in different ways yeah. because it's just it's actually it's about principles right it's it's uh it's not about um here's one thing for this thing and here's another thing for this thing and here's another thing for this thing it's ultimately it's all down to principles and it's and also it's not when you start to break it down it's not hugely complicated anymore about mm-hmm. what uh, what it is to to live a good life. It's just about putting the reps in, as you say, man. Got to put the reps in. Too right, man. Too right. I'm just going to take you next door and plug you in, man, because I'm about my my uh, iPad's about to die. Oh, no worries, man. You got to, um, I thought you were going to show me the board, the, the quote board. Ah, the, the board, the quote board. I, I'm going to unveil that. that that's going to be, you're going to tune in next episode to see the quote board. <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's how we're going to play that one. Yeah, yeah, I'm brown, brown, and big brown. <laughs> Quote board. Yeah, there's uh, board brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 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 the, board, the whiteboard, sick man. That's this is. Uh, I don't know if anybody out there like follows Tom Bellew, uh, Impact yep. Theory. Um, yeah, yeah. He's he had a video out this week which was just talking about like we've had it we've had it through this podcast quite a lot, which is like the things you tell yourself, the the, the questions you ask yourself, and um, if anyone can take anything away from this, right, I think that should be a thing like just like what questions did you ask yourself today which keep you in line with who you want to be and also just mm-hmm. like who do you want to be like if, if you if you could pick if you could pick your life if you choose your life what would mm-hmm. you say oh this this is this is cool life like that guy that guy did something pretty pretty awesome that girl did something pretty awesome i want to be that you know what i mean that's mm-hmm. uh yeah and then just be in line bro be a step <laughs> step to the line step to the that's line it. And yeah, express man. it your own and express it your own way, right? And like that, yeah. it's like ask yourself the question because if you ask yourself a question, you have to answer it. <laughs> it's mm. not just making a statement. You've got to ask yourself that open-ended question, or uh, even if it's just a yes/no question, is like that will help you to um, to align. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Should we, should we call it there? Yeah, that's that's perfect. Yeah, man. That was a that was a that was a solid podcast, guys. <laughs> yeah. hope, hope you all enjoyed it hope you all enjoyed it it's a gift it's a gift <laughs> <laughs> yeah man do you know what it's, this definitely sustains me through the entire week I finished I finished the podcast I'm just like yeah I got this yeah. I got this I can do this exactly it was keep, like keep uh, fully man it's uh, it feels great I mean like I've had a weekend of great conversations I've just felt pumped it's, it's been great it's like uh, with uh, Jude yesterday yeah juju if you're listening we're gonna have her on the podcast at one point she's an interesting cat bro like um she was a high level musician for a long time what worked, are you in, saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, worked in the music industry and uh now is a uh, pilates coach 
and um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, like all her life experiences are super interesting as well. She's got, um, I think she's got some interesting stuff to say, and um, I'm sure she has, man. Yeah, sure she so, has. and like some exactly, man, some perspectives as well, which would be, uh, which would be good to explore. So, mm. uh, which we'll at some point, but um, sure. yeah, and then I spoke with Sam as well. That was great, and then the boys today, a bit of fight mm. companion. And so it was. Uh, it's been a good weekend, man. It's been a great, sustaining weekend, as you say. That's the one, man. We need to we need to expand into that into the fight companion game, man. That's that's something that I've talked <laughs> about. Talked about. Talked to my cousins about loads, and uh, it's such a funny thing. I don't, I don't know how you get when you watch fights, but uh, it I think it depends massively on who's fighting. Mm. Like if yeah. there's if there's a Khabib fight on, just yeah. my household, my like cousins it's just it's just like there's tension like palpable tension in the air and uh until that first takedown happens we're just like oh thank you yeah thank you just yeah. get him take him down beat the shit out of him like that, that's that's yeah. the way this has to go um exactly. when, he, when he fought mcgregor that was the funniest night where one of us was just like we're up watching it and uh he hits him with a with a with an overhand right in the start of the second round and i swear mm. we must have woke up the entire street <laughs> like just, just like starting, yeah, beating your chest and doing all this and doing it's like it's like four in the morning, man. What are you guys doing? Shut up! Yeah. But uh, yeah, <laughs> obviously, when, when, when there's just kind of like people that you have less emotional kind of ties to, you're you're still watching, just like, whoa, well, shit, this is a crazy fight. But like you were saying, you were saying earlier about Fergie kind of getting mm. wiped out. That was a, but I, th I thought I thought that uh, Gaethje fought the perfect fight, man. He did so yeah. well. Yeah. It's like, I mean, compared to all you boys, I've got like the least interest in terms of just uh, what's going on in the fight game. But I have okay. such respect for them as not just athletes, but what it takes to mm. be in the octagon. And so when I watch it, it's like I'm getting a bit of an education because I'm asking questions like, you know, Sam is like, no, what happened here? What was this? And then I can understand it from like, you know, movement perspective. I was like, oh, he moves in this way. This guy moves in this way. He does this, this, this. And, but then, yeah, like what, yeah, what Gaethje did was, uh, it was spectacular, man. He had, he's got the highest, um, so I looked at the stats as well. He's got the highest uh, strike, uh, significant strike rate in the UFC history, but like 50, it's like 55.6% or something. And he landed 72.6% of his significant strikes on oh, uh, Ferguson. So think about that level. He just fucking tore his body up. It wasn't even mm. just his face. His leg was bleeding as well. Yeah, his shins are bleeding, right? Because it, mm. it was just ridiculous. That was absolutely yeah. unbelievable. But uh, do you know what? It's, it's to me, um, through training now, I'm starting to see that it's it's such a beneficial thing to go through. I think everybody should learn how to fight. Everybody should learn how to yeah. like put your hands up and defend yourself. Put your hands up and ask questions of somebody with your hands. Ask questions of somebody with your feet. Ask somebody. Ask questions of somebody with your clinch, with your takedown game, yeah. and um, and your jits on the floor. Right. I think it's such a such an important thing for people to go through. Um, just for myself, like having understood that there's so much going on in that little tiny microcosm, depending on mm. how you slip your head or how you step out or how you kind of present yourself and how you parry and defend and what's going through your head, what's going through their head the the pressure and i'd love to get the analytics on this like we talk about like the neurology behind what's going on like mm. looking at the neurology behind like a like a li uh, offensive lineman or whatever when he's when he's about to take a mm. tackle or somebody like a quarterback throwing a throwing a um um a touchdown kind of pass and mm. the same thing somebody standing in front of you like with the intention to hit you the same way you're intended to hit them like what the is going on in your head right there like yeah. like I'll, I'll, that would be some kind of primeval like yeah the brain would be going on some ridiculous level but i don't even know what kind of chemicals would be pumped out there like just everything yeah. everything to the max you know what i mean it's exactly uh, super interesting man super interesting yeah is, yeah fully man it'll be interesting people to study that's why like uh yeah just ferguson was just showed what uh what crazy man he is just being able to take mm. all that abuse and just keep walking forward as well too right man too right that, that was that was bonkers like, in terms of his body i don't know what he's made of man like his face yeah. what is his what is his forehead made of like he took some shots in the first round that like, were just like don't yeah. take any more of those and he just kept exactly. taking them for another 20 minutes and he was just like what the, <laughs> the hell man that makes no sense bonkers man. man bonkers exactly. yeah wicked bro dude All right. sick that was so much fun uh, pleasure as always man I'll, too uh, right man we'll you, Definitely, man. You you got to go and sit in quiet for another like five hours now. Just not talk to anybody. <laughs> A balance. A balance. I'm all talked out. Yeah.
<laughs> nice man. Come, G, I will chat to you. I'll chat to you soon, yeah? Sounds good. Take it easy. Take it easy, man. See you later.